people commit suicide guy committed suicide on the same landing as me at um long Larton. i knew what he was doing I, this is before i got saved by the way yeah i knew what he was doing but i just laid there and carried on rolling my cigarette i wasn't going to get involved because the rest of the lads on the wing thought he was some sort of nonce or grass they hated him yeah he killed himself Prison doesn't do any good for your. Uh, it sort of turns turns your heart into a swinging brick. Mm. It does, Jeff. Well, I know when I worked at the addiction center, Bob, a lot of the guys that were kind of in and out of the jail system, they just they didn't care about anything. Yeah. Well, I did care about some things. It's just that as time went on. I mean, I got saved in 92. I went in jail 1980. So I was 12 years in, you know. You either toughen up or you just end up bloody, I don't know, hanging yourself or just depressed all the time. So you just got to either toughen up and get on with it uh, and whatever. Find every way you can to make your life easier. I suppose it's basically a survival thing. It is, really. I think I, I made a point of surviving in that 30 years, 31 years jail out of just pure bloody-mindedness. I wasn't mm. going to get the screws and empty cell to put somebody else in. So as long as I was alive, my attitude was, I was a pain in the neck. Hey guys, I, I'm back. Just wanted to finally, finally got the stupid okay. internet backing up and running. You all right, John? Yeah, I fi just finally got the, the stupid internet back up and running again. Yeah, yeah. I, I also wanted to sh just quickly show you guys. Like, you remember how earlier I mentioned about that that Mike Enoch character with, with who was like there's like basically going off with Jews and then he's married to one the whole time. I actually I forgot that I actually had uploaded clips of his debate with Halsey on my my personal channel. I, I, was, I just wanted. Show you the funny part where Halsey calls him out, and he just gets triggered over that. Uh, how do I share a screen? I haven't done this in a while. How do you share the screen? I forget, you, how, you, forget how you do that. Uh, uh, just go to the bottom. You see share, and I'll put it up on oh. screen for you. Jim. Oh, okay. I see how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, where is it? Oh, there we go. Finally found it. Okay, share screen. Here we go. Okay, so here, here basically, uh, and let me know if you can hear it or not. But this is I uploaded clips of, clips of their debate on my personal channel. Uh, let me let, let me know if you can hear this or not because I last time I tried this on my other channel it didn't work. C can you guys hear that? No. Okay, you can't hear that. Okay, let, let me try something real quick. Let me just try doing this on my. Let me just stop share. share let me stop sharing. Okay, let me let me try this on my phone with the audio. Okay, so, so this this is basically Mike Enoch and Halsey having their little argument, and then this is the part where Halsey calls up Mike, and Mike gets all triggered like a specific complaint so fraud what specifically is the fraud that i have done the fraud that you have done yeah you hosted a show called the daily show us okay. you are married to a woman who goes to trans events and is jewish and you're sitting here hosting a show called the daily show us you didn't divorce her that would have been a manly thing to do to all right hold on a second wait, no, we can, i i am fucking, uh wait, it, no, this no, is not, these are not arguments you, pal. i didn't speak over you don't speak over me please what I'm saying is the manly thing would to do if you agreed that Jews were so horrible is that you would have divorced her. Instead, when it came out that you were married to a Jew, she went after you. She left you. When this all came out, I've read all the articles. And you know what? Maybe none of it is true. Maybe some of it is true. Maybe all of it is true. I'm betting it's true, though, Mike. I'm betting it's true that your parents don't talk to you anymore. I'm betting it's true that your brother doesn't talk to you anymore. I'm betting it's true that your wife divorced you and you still came out and said, look at me. I'm a white warrior. And there, there's, there's one other part I wanted to show as well. It was, uh, and, and also there, there was a bit of profanity there, but which I forgot about. But uh, I just want to try to find it first. But it, it's, it's actually a really interesting debate they had. But it was a, it was a three-hour video. But uh, one sec. Okay, here it is. Finally, finally found it. Let me just pull it up again. But um, it is at around seven minutes and fourteen seconds in. Uh, here it is. 
that uh, the uh, determination of what a person is saying is determined by their character. I keep saying you have. Wait, I'm sorry. You, I'm actually legitimately sorry. You broke up. What I'm saying is that a person's legitimacy is determined by their character. If you're going to go out and advocate that everybody is connected to the Jews and it's all about the Jews and the Jews do all of this, then I have the right to look into who is saying it to determine whether it you has. You always have that right, no matter what. You can look into me. I don't care. Okay. Right. And as I said, when you stepped on what I'm saying is that the, the idea Jewish that you marry your Jewish wife. I don't. I didn't hear you advocating for all of a sudden the Jews are so evil. I didn't even hear you advocating it when you were hiding in the closet doing daily shows so your wife wouldn't hear you. She Again, advocated see, when she the, left. See, here's you. the thing: we we get to a point where you, we're talking about stuff you don't want to talk about, and you go into this again. You go into my personal history because I'm saying so you're lying, saying, Mike. I am lying. Where am I lying? Point where am I lying? You are lying. Where? What? Where, where is the lie? Tell me where I'm lying about. What There's I'm other problems. Look, there. I'm not saying that that Jews are like the only problem. Again, I feel like you want to reduce your me show to, is called and, and, the Daily Show. Yeah, okay. you're talking about Jews almost nonstop. We talk Jews about other things. Talk about. I mean, right, I know that's... you talk about other things. Okay. What... Yeah, that, that was the whole thing. So that was that was basically their debate they have, where he basically calls him out and he gets all triggered over that. Well, it's like, well, it's, it's true, you know, you know. But it's just an example of how all these alt right guys are frauds, and they're not who they say they are. Yeah. That's up. I think I saw that discussion or debate somewhere. I can't remember who put me onto it. Yeah, it might have been you, John. I I, I just lo I just love that one point where Howes is like Howes Howes like, dude, you're show you're talking about Jews non stop. And his only response is, well, we talk about other things too. But it's like, but like even when he does talk about other things, it always goes back to Jews. Like he'll always find some way to, to mention Jews. You know, even when he does talk oh, yeah. about other stuff. So it just, it's just funny. So yeah. hate for the Jews is just demonic. Well, the thing thing about it too is that you know. When I was an atheist, I was kind of into the whole white supremacy thing. And yeah. what they basically think is they basically think that the Jews are essentially the, the ultimate enemy of the white race. And and that's why that's why many of these white supremacists are just, you know, they, they're against Jews, you know. So that's the whole thing. Jewish people are uh, uh, white, aren't they? Well, the, they're, well, the, some of the Ashkenazis there, but like, but like, you know, they, the, but you talk to any white supremacists, they'll say that Jews are not white. So. Well, well, like, my, what was that? Well, it's all devil is strong. What was that? So like Bob shared, it's all devilish. Yeah, that that's the thing too, is that you know, and, and the thing is too, is that you know what he, what these guys are realize because again, when I was a white when I was kind of into the whole white supremacy thing, I was kind of devolving into the whole and even when I was with the new IFB, I was kind of delving into the, the Jewish, you know, control of the world and that kind of stuff. And there is an element of truth to that because there are some high level Jews, but what they don't realize is that all of them are submissive to the Pope. I mean, all of them have some, yeah. some night have night hits in the Pope. So so even when they do bring up these high level Jews in power, which there are there are definitely some up there, all of them are if not I mean, I mean, I I, I heard like, you know. I have my disagreements with Jason Cooley, but he he brought up you know something. He he said something very true. He said you know there 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 there's none of these these billionaire Jews telling the trillionaire uh, black pope and his henchmen the white pope what to do. I mean there's not out no. there. I mean I mean there's no <laughs> Jew, there's no Jew telling the pope what to do. It's the other way around. Yeah. So so I mean are there high level Jews in power? Absolutely. But guess who they submit to? They're, they're all they're all submitted to the pope. You know. Yeah. In fact, I don't think you can become a billionaire without some sort of. Um... Helping hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I argue that. I argue that too. You know, and I, I've actually argued with the, with the white supremacists on Gab, like on Gab, because Gab is a hotbed for white supremacists. I've actually argued with them. Where I said, you know, yeah, they are definitely high level Jews, but you forget the fact that a lot of them have some connection to the Pope. You know, and then they, you know, of course, of course, they call me a, a Jewish, whatever. Even though I'm not even Jewish, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I actually have, my, my, I post my profile picture, and like I'm clearly not Jewish. I, I, I'm Russian. So, but of course, you know. If you disagree with them, you're automatically Jewish or whatever. But, but like, 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 it's a half truth because there are high level Jews in power, but they're not the ones really in power. They submit to the Pope. No, they use just front men. They use just stooges essentially to take the blame. Yeah, I've I've heard Eric Phelps point that out how a lot how they put these high level Jews in power to to take the blame when really all these high level Jews, like again, there's there's no billionaire Jew telling a trillionaire black Pope and his henchmen the white Pope what to do. Or, or, or as Cooley put it, this is how Jason Cooley put it. He he said there's no trillionaire, or, or said he said there's no billionaire Jew telling the trillionaire king of the arcane master occult leader the black pope and his henchman the white pope. That's why he put it: the king of the arcane master occult leader, the black pope and his henchman the white pope. What to do? That that's the thing. And and here's the thing too is that you know I I, I criticize 
like the religion like what's called what's called Judaism because obviously it rejects Jesus Christ it, it denies he's the Messiah so yeah I'm critical of that but the thing is what they do is that they don't just criticize it religiously they actually go after them as a race so that, that's why it's bad what they do you know I don't think they'll be walking through the 12 gates <laughs> yeah oh and the fun part is is when they claim when some of these guys like again that Mike Enoch guy he claim, he claims to be a Christian well Kind of, it's kind of hard when you know the god you claim to worship is was a Jew, so got a bit of a problem there. Yeah, you couldn't get and, more Jew than Jesus. And, and that's the funny thing too is that when I was part of the new IFB, when I was kind of like a big Jew hater myself, I mean, again, when I was with the new IFB, I was probably the most anti-Jewish person in my entire province of Canada. I mean, I, I hated Jews with a passion, but like, I, but like, but then I, I couldn't, I could never just get over the fact that you know the savior i claimed to worship was jewish you know so I, I i had to kind of just try to ignore that when i was part of the new ifb because it makes it a problem for you if you're going to hate jews me all the god you worship is was a jew it, it makes a bit of a problem there yeah <laughs> yeah so it'd be, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be like me hating arabs but then you worship allah you know how, how does that work But I just I just love that how, how Mike Enoch is like basically living his double life and he he's like married to a Jewish woman while hosting his his daily show, which basically in English means a daily Holocaust podcast. And then when he gets called out on it, he gets all triggered. Well it's like, well, you're the one that was living a double life, buddy. And and the Halsey Halsey even pointed out because Halsey's a pretty right wing Orthodox Jew. He even pointed out too that he would have actually had more respect for Mike Enoch if he felt that Mike Enoch actually believed the stuff he was saying. But 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 he doesn't. Like in Halsey's wording, Mike Enoch just just says this kind of stuff because he wants to hang out with the cool kids, whoever whoever he decided the cool kids were. He doesn't actually believe the stuff he says. Which which you know I'd agree with Halsey. You know that the Halsey would he said he he said he said I'd have more respect for him if he actually if I thought he actually believed this, but he doesn't. He's just saying this because he wants to be with the cool kids, whoever he decided they were. So to get a sip of water. Yeah. It was, also, it was also it was also kind of funny as well how the debate was like a three hour debate and, and like everyone was trying was claiming Mike Enoch won yet the entire debate I mean Mike Enoch just kept you know just just going off like a little girl with Halsey and Halsey was the one who was being kind of mature and and then it was like it was like that part where Halsey's like wait let me finish he had to say it like twenty plus times because Mike Enoch just kept going off like a little girl when he was trying to talk it was kind of funny actually I do want you going looking for monsters John. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. I, I, if I happen to run into one, I'll probably have my hunting knife on me. I think you might need more than that. <laughs> well, I mean, if the if the Wendigo does have some kind of connection to these creatures in Genesis six, I'll probably need more than just a hunting knife. <laughs> yeah, but I think the best thing would be to call on the name of Jesus Christ. It might. Yeah, be or or same thing if I if I find this this serpent that supposedly lives in in Lake Huron. It, again, it'll, it'll have a connection to the. You know, so, I mean, the, be, the best you can really do is just call the name of Jesus Christ because it, it chances are, like, like, it's a good chance it's demonic. So, that's the best you can really do. I mean, just like, like you're not going to fight off a demonic creature with a, with a hunting knife. <laughs> Can't do no. that. I mean, you, like, you'd lose. Like, like, to say, like, you'd definitely lose the fight, to say the least. <laughs> But I understand your interest, John. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've always believed. I've always been a believer in that. I mean, like even when I was an atheist, I always had believed that they, they like something like there definitely is something in that area that is not supposed to exist, but it does. You know, because again, these Native Americans, like, like I don't, like I don't think they're lying when they say they, they the things exist. I mean, because they, they've, they've, they've lived out there and it was for hundreds of years, so they, they, they probably have a good idea what's out there. You know. Why would they lie anyway? I mean, I don't think it's part of their. Yeah. Well, uh, in their culture, you know, they, they just don't do that. And plus, too, you know, just on the basis of them, how they've been out in the woods. I mean, like the European settlers, they came there, but then these people, they, they lived out there. So it's like they had the experience with the wildlife yeah. there. So if they if they say, hey, this this thing is out there who gets hungry every time it eats more, it's like, hey, there's, there's probably a lot of truth to that. There probably is something out there that, or, or <clears throat> more than one thing out there that probably is doing that. But I've thought, I've realized one thing about this survival stuff, John. The last thing you should be doing as a 
as a survivalist out in the middle of the woods is lying to yourself about what's what and what isn't exactly yeah that's, that's, that's the last thing you should ever doing especially when you're when you're dealing with something like like that you know they don't yeah. just think oh don't just think oh it's nothing at all that, that's one of the things that, that that is really dangerous when you're a kid is that when you when you hear when you talk about oh ghosts don't exist vampires or whatever don't exist you're taught oh it's nothing at all it's kind of dangerous because then when it actually is there you just think it's nothing and then it gets closer and closer yeah i mean i remember when i was a kid i was always like when i was a kid um I, I remember, I remember, I remember clear as day. Watch, like, listen to this, this kid, this kid's cartoon, or whatever, where they say, "Oh, if you hear something go bump, it's it's nothing at all." Well, reading scripture, if I hear something go bump in the night, there probably is something there. You know what I mean? It, it's not just nothing at all. So, which you know, is is just, it's it's I, I'd say it's dangerous because then kids are just you know ignorant of the fact that there is a spirit world this way. Yeah. And, yeah, and, I mean, and, and, and go ahead. Sorry, go on, John. I was gonna say too is like you know, like for example, I've heard I heard someone put it this way where you know like when someone goes to watch a horror film, like a demonic horror film, and then comes home and and then hears weird things in the middle of the night or hears like things like moving or whatever. Yeah, it's because probably because you you brought a creature or you brought a spirit home with you. You know what I mean? So don't don't just think it's nothing. If there is something there, so yeah, you're right with the survival thing. Don't just assume it's nothing. You're probably it probably is something there. Mm. Like I mean, I mean, I've heard it. Say, I've heard you've heard someone say too. I heard it said too. You know, if you feel like you're being watched, chances are you probably are being watched. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, have you ever? I don't mean to interrupt, but have you or John ever heard of this one called the Gray Pope? I've never, heard, never, never heard of that. They sent a link. I've heard, in the description. Of, I've heard of the Gray Man. The who now? Oh. I put a link in the description. Oh. Oh, there we go. I'll check that out. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, the oh. Well, I mean, pretty much, it, it's an accurate depiction because all popes are prophets against God. So, description. Well, this for one's all. saying, John. There's actually three now: the white, the black, and the gray. Oh. Well, the the title is pretty accurate. I mean, all popes are prophets of Baal, so title is pretty accurate. I mean, any, anybody who calls himself a pope is is blaspheming. As as any, anyone who calls himself a pope is blaspheming God because the word pope in Latin means holy father. So and yeah. just calling yourself a pope means you're blaspheming God because you're giving himself his title. Because yeah. like the, the term holy father appears once in the, like it's John 17, 11, and it's referring to God the Father. So that's that's the thing there. <sighs> the gray pope. I wonder what other colors of popes there are too. It's a woman though. You know, that's so enhanced, a little cringy. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I can tell by the, by the hand with the nail polish. Yeah, and the squeaky voice. Yeah. But hey, you know, the Catholic Church is essentially a big secret society, so I wouldn't be surprised with all kinds of weird stuff. You know, like all kinds of different popes that we don't know about. You know what I mean? Because it is—it's essentially just one big secret society of the Catholic churches. I guess they said there's something called the the Black Nobility or something. Uh, yeah, the old Roman families um, from, I believe, uh, Venice. They were massive in terms of paying for the crusades and shipping and warships a lot of the uh, black nobility are from venice the ancient uh, roman families which still exist today hmm. i can't remember the names of them Farnese. uh oh i can't remember yeah, the old, I mean, they were billionaires at the time of Jesus, uh, John. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and oh, the other thing I believe about Venice, you've heard of the Phoenicians, haven't you? I think I have one time, yeah. Yeah, they had a base. They were based in Tyra of Sidon. Does that ring uh, a bell to you? Isn't that where Satan's seat is in Revelation 2? Or, or, that's, or am I, I thinking of something else? Something like that. And I believe that the Phoenicians actually moved to Venice. If we play about with that word Venice, yeah. like the people that live there are called what? Venetians. Oh, yeah. 
So instead of the V, just put the PH. <laughs> yeah. True. Actually, true. That's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so they were massive bankers. The Doge of Venice, I mean, unbelievably rich. Uh, and they used to finance the Crusades for the so called Pope. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 just wanted, I just wanted to correct myself. So Satan's seat is actually located in Antipas, not the other place. I was oh, yeah. yeah that, I mean, that's Revelation 2.13. It says, where it says, you know, I know thy works where thou dwells, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied the faith, even in those days where Antipas... Sorry, oh, sorry, that's the name of the person. Sorry, I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, the faithful hey, martyrs. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's Pergamos. Pergamos, that's where it is. I do apologize. Mixed marriage, Pergamos means. Have you... Have you heard of the King of Tyra, though? Yeah, he's in Ezekiel uh, thirty or twenty-eight. He, he basically, I think, is Satan in that in that passage there. Yeah, but the King of Tyra was based in, um, well, Tyra of Sidon. Yeah, I, I know that in Ezekiel Ezekiel uh, twenty-eight, it it basically describes Satan and it gives him the title King of Tyre. I, I know that sure. as a fact. Yeah. But Tyra was a base for the Phoenicians. Yeah, what doesn't they, surprise me. I think it was. I, I do remember it. I actually heard a theory one time that 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 where Satan's seat in Revelation chapter two verse thirteen, the the, the, the Vatican's actually built like where 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 it was in Revelation two thirteen. I I mean, I, I wouldn't, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. But actually, that place is mentioned quite a few. Pl uh, places in scripture 12 occurrences of it what satan see tyra the place oh, tyra, tyra. No. but it's actually oh it's mentioned in the old testament as well joshua samuel one i think king. it's mentioned primarily in the old testament like i know ezekiel 28 mentions that another couple of i think the book of daniel mentions it at one point yeah psalms I know that, for example, you know, I actually, I actually heard a quote one time from the 1500s where it says that, you know, if, if, if you know, if, if we could find, like, it, it says something where the Vatican is like built over hell or, or hell exists and it's underneath the Vatican or whatever, which, you know, true statement. That's, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the Vatican, I mean, the Catholic Church is basically a ticket to hell, so it wouldn't surprise yeah. me one bit. But that Vatican city, that, that Vatican building, I mean, that's where the old rem emperors used to reside. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Look at Eric Phelps. Like, I, I listened to Eric Phelps. He was saying that when when they, when their Catholic church was started, they just took pagan Roman temples and, and made them into Catholic churches. The, yeah, the, the, exactly the, the, I mean, yeah, exactly. In that, in that square that they named after, even though Peter never went to Rome, yeah, that's a fun part. We've got an obelisk in the middle, a branchless tree cult symbol, a symbol of, well, it's basically um, a symbol of a P-E-N-I-S. And it's funny, too, because you actually look at the design of the, of the St. Peter's Basilica, it's very identical to a, a, a pagan Roman temple. I mean, even just the statues yeah. on top of it, too. But like, I, I, I might just do a video on this where I just show pictures of pagan Roman temples and then right beside pictures of the Vatican, how they're basically the same thing. Like, they have the same design and everything. So, yeah. And, and then one could argue, too, that the saints the saints on top are just basically Roman gods, essentially. Oh, they because, are. Because what, what Eric Phelps said is that basically what they did was they just took pagan Roman gods and made them into the saints. They they took, uh, I think it was was Venus, they made her into the Virgin Mary. They took, Saint Jupiter became Saint Peter, and then, or sorry, Saint, not Saint Jupiter, the god Jupiter became Saint Peter, and then I think Zeus became God the Father, and, and then all this other stuff. And then I think Hercules became God the Son, basically. But all, all they did was just take pagan Roman gods and just, just repackage them. That's all they did. Yeah. Just put new clothing on that wall. Yeah. H hence why when you go to St. Peter's Basilica, this the so-called statues of saints just look like pagan Roman gods. I mean, there's no difference. Isn't there an expression, Bob, that says you're putting lipstick on the pig? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it just, it's the same thing with Islam. Islam is just simply a repackaging of a pagan Arabian religion. That's all that it is. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, like a lot of their, like a lot of the beliefs, in, like for example, the belief in in jinns, genies, it, it it comes from uh, pre-Islamic Arabia. A lot of the 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 prayers, the the facing Mecca when you pray, all this other stuff, the yeah. the the prevalence of the moon in Islamic art, all that is just repackaging a pagan Arabian religion. That's all that it is. Well, yeah. like what what Muhammad basically did was that he like because like, the Arabians like what they had gods essentially for each day of the year. He just got rid of all the other gods and kept one of them, Allah. That's what he did. Yeah. 
Well, they used to have 360 idols apparently inside that cover. Yeah, from from what I from what I read, what Muhammad basically did was that because apparently it, it is a basic fact that the Arabs already worshipped Allah as as a moon deity, uh, which you know Muslims don't want to admit that, but it, it's a fact. I mean, they, they already did that. Yeah. And what Muhammad basically did was he just took he got rid of the other gods and just kept one of them, Allah, which is actually why early on he had very little problems converting the Arabs because they weren't they weren't like unknown to Allah. They already were worshiping him beforehand. Yeah. And plus, too, like, have you ever noticed when you Google Islamic art, have you ever noticed the, the prevalence of the moon in Islamic art? And you know, you see pictures of, of the word Allah on the moon. Why? Because I think they're just subconsciously picturing Allah as the moon deity, and they don't even know it. Did I show you that image once, John, of Mary, supposedly, an image of Mary on top of the Ark of the Covenant? No, yeah, I saw it. I, I love that when Catholics try to make it like she's like the Ark of the Covenant or whatever. I, I just yeah. love that. I, I love that comparison. It's so funny. Bro believes that. It's in that debate I had with him. I showed really? him that picture. Oh, yeah. Even, went... even more funny is when they try to say that, that Revelation 12 is describing Mary. I love that. That, that. that that always cracks me up when they try to say that Revelation 12 is about Mary. I'm like, yeah, wow. No. That, I, mean, that, that, I mean, whenever I hear that, I just think, okay, what, what other jokes do you have to tell me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what other jokes do you have to to make light my day? <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you think that Revelation twelve was about Mary, I mean, seriously, yeah, give me a break. Well, she's pregnant again. Yeah, wait, she's pregnant. Wait, wait a second. So she's pregnant again. That means she can't be a virgin if she's pregnant again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and then and then this really blasphemous comparison where they try to say that that Mary is stepping on on the, the serpent. It's like, yeah, that I mean, that that's wicked. I mean, it's Jesus Christ, not Mary, doing that. I mean, I mean, what they do is they'll take, they'll rip, they'll do that verse, that that really beautiful verse in Genesis three where it talks about Jesus stepping on the serpent. They'll make it like Mary's the one doing that. You know, I, I, I've seen I've seen Catholics do that. They'll say, they'll try to say that verse is talking about Mary stepping on the serpent, which I'd say is just blasphemous, really, because it's it's talking about Jesus, not Mary. Yeah. Oh, but but then they claim they don't worship Mary. Sure. Which is funny too. I used to, I used to. My my high school was near a Catholic a Catholic area. I just walked through the Catholic area. I saw Mary statues statues all over the place. Never, I never did I ever see. I only seldom saw Jesus Christ. It was just Mary all over the place. You know, I mean, the one like, like when I would see Jesus, it'd be like in a little manger. That was it, or on one of those demonic crucifixes. But it was just Mary all over the place. But then they claim they don't worship her. But like it's like they just have her all over the place. And not to mention too, their shrines to Mary look like no different than a Hindu shrine. But Whatever. Well, they've got that weird stuff. Have you ever seen those bone chapels, John? Oh, yeah, those are creepy. Just to say yeah. the least. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just sick. And plus, too, it's like, like Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36 all do that hate me love death. Well, there you go. Yeah. I love death. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And plus, too, like, like remember Mark chapter 5, the devil possessed man hung around the tombs, hung around the graves. So they're, they're yeah. just proving their devil yeah. when, they, when they collect skulls like that. I mean, that's just and plus too, just on a on a rational basis, that's pretty morbid in my opinion. Oh, it's sick. Yeah. I mean, me personally, if I ever saw that, I'd probably lose my appetite at that point. I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah. Well, the, these Catholics will roll out these cadavers in these like glass coffin <laughs> things. Yeah, they prayed around dead bodies of saints. I mean, that's just Decorated weird. Decorated jewelry. I mean, Fro. I'm not going to go at Fro. He's an, he will admit it to you. He's got a what he calls um, a relic. A, yeah, a relic. I can't remember. If it was a second class or a third class relic. <coughs> but I mean, he must have spent two or three hundred dollars on it. Yeah. Or, or when they prayed around, and not just Catholics, the Orthodox, quote unquote, Christians do the same thing as well. They, the Russian Orthodox, yeah. Greek Orthodox, whatever, they do the same thing as well. They'll, they'll have like the, the toe or, or a finger of some saint. I saw, I saw a video of that one time where they're praying around like the, like the foot of some saint or whatever. It's like yeah. they do the same thing as well. I mean, they're, they're just. As, what as, I um, find amusing, John, is that these Eastern Orthodox, um, I'm speaking generally, will. Say that they're not the same as the Catholics, and yet they are. Yeah. Well, it's funny. David David Claude has a good article on his website about Eastern Orthodoxy. They, I mean, despite some minor doctrinal differences, they're really not that much different. I mean, all it is is just, you're just Catholicism repackaged. It's all that it really is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from the two legs in Daniel two, the image. Yeah. 
Eastern, Eastern Orthodoxy, Western Orthodoxy joined at the hip. Well, it's funny too, because whenever I do a video on Eastern Orthodoxy, uh, the response is often very similar to when I do videos on Catholicism. You know, yeah. the, the, I mean, the thing is too, is that, you know, I mean, the, the, like for example, Eastern Orthodox and Catholics, they both pray to Mary. They both pray to saints. They both have all their little icons and idols they bow down to. They both, you know, pray for dead people to get them out of hell. They both believe in work salvation. They both believe in baptism of babies. I mean, they have a lot in common. They have, they have more in common than what they differ on. Yeah. Oh, and they also they also have a lot of influence from Eastern religions like Hinduism and Buddhism too. Like the idea of monks and monasteries and that kind of stuff. That all comes from Hinduism and Buddhism. Well, that Mariolatry imagery at the crescent moon, they always have that on the on those little statue things. Yeah. Which oh, also ever heard the... ever heard of the Eye of Providence? And, and on Catholic churches, yeah. have, I, I showed this in some of my videos. The Eye of Providence. It's basically just the Illuminati all seeing Eye of Horus. Supposedly yeah. representing God, supposedly representative of God the Father, but you know they they'll have that they'll have that. I got saw it on a Jesuit statue one time when they have it all over the place. They have it on front the front door of Catholic churches. This this all seeing yeah. eye of Providence, they, yeah. as they call it. Yeah, that's a uh, Polaris, John. What is that eye you're talking about? Oh, that thing, yeah. Basically, Satan's eye in the sky. Essentially, yeah, that's, that's what it is. I mean, but 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 I've heard them say, "Oh, it's God the Father." I'm like, sure, sure it is. Well, I mean, the, the lower down Catholics, they might think it's God the Father, but the higher up ones, they, they know full well what they know full well what they're doing. Like, like like I've always I've always believed like this is what I've always kind of believed is that the lower down Catholics they're just ignorant they they have no idea what's really going on but the higher up ones they know full well that they're worshiping Satan they 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 know full well. Well, they did that service that Easter vigil thing. Some yeah, but they, but they call they said that Satan was the son of Mary or whatever. I mean, yeah, it, it's, no, it's, it's, it's saying it's, that Satan is is Jesus' brother or something. I can't remember. I did a video on it. I've got it somewhere. I I actually have like seven different clips of seven different like Easter masses where they all say they they say Christus filius tuus, which is Christ is your son, O yeah. Lucifer. So it's like it's like yeah. it, it, it's like it's like I have like seven different clips of that, like separate clips of them saying that. So it's like yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's like right in front of your face, but then people can't see. Oh, you know, they're basically just openly worshiping Satan. And it's like right in your face. Yeah. And and that's and that's in every Easter mass. I mean, I mean, I, I have like seven clips. Every Easter mass, they do this. I mean, it's like every single Easter mass. You like at some point they'll do that. Yeah, John. Oh, yeah. While I'm at it, John, I have a look at uh, in the Catholic, the Catechism of the Catholic so-called Church. I had a copy of it on my bookshelf. Let me grab it. Number four hundred and sixty. Okay, what's it? Four hundred and sixty. Let's see where it is. Because I, I actually managed to get a, a, my hands on one off Amazon. I, I was going to buy one, but I thought, yeah. I'm not putting out. Uh, no offense to you, John, I'm not having a go. I don't know where it's. just no way I'm going to put money in their pocket. Oh, I, honestly, it. I'll blame you. That, that was why when I bought mine off Amazon, I made sure that I was able to get a deal off because I don't want to give them too much of my money. Yeah. yeah. You know, but uh, what did you say? It was 400 and what now? Six, 460. 460. Four, it went too far. Um, Okay, four six zero. Okay, so is this what this is what their catechism says? This is this is on this is page one hundred twenty eight in the catechism, the copy I have at least. This is four sixty. This is paragraph four hundred sixty. The Word became flesh to make us partakers of the divine nature. For this is why this is why the Word became man, and the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that man, by entering into communion with the Word, thus receiving divine sonship, might become a son of God. For well, the Son of God became man, that so that we may become God. The only begotten Son of God, wanting wanting to make us sharers in His divinity, assumed our nature that He might be made man, that He that He might that He made man might make men gods. You know what that sounds like? Genesis chapter three verse five: "You shall be as gods." That's what Satan said. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, just, they're, they're basically preaching flat out Satanism in, in this thing there, saying that man yeah. can become God. So it's what Satan told Eve: "You shall be as gods." Yeah, but you know, I pointed that out to Fro. I'm not having a go at you, Fro, if you're listening. <laughs> but he actually said to me, I couldn't believe it, right? He said, Oh, it says that, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> You've got to go to Catholic sources. I said, Look, Fro, I mean, there's no way on earth I'm going to go to Catholic sources to get 
Oh, and, and we forget that this is the, this this. And we forget um this is a Catholic source. It's your catechism. This is a Catholic source. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. This is the Catholic yeah. source we're reading right now. It's the Catholic. Yeah, so wait a second. Ball. So wait a second. Yeah. Now now we not not only do we need Catholic sources to determine scripture, we need Catholic sources to determine what Catholic sources say. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. It sounds very Islamic, doesn't it? It, it definitely does. Yeah. Oh, well, we got to learn Arabic. You know, if you want you to learn, learn Arabic, Arabic, you can't you can't have the Quran without Arabic. You know. Yeah. That, that, you know. So, so now apparently we can't read Catholic sources without learning from Catholic sources. Yeah. So, so, so when, when it says, so when it says, when it says just openly that man might become gods, oh, that doesn't mean that man. That doesn't mean that what it's saying. So wait a second, man can become gods, but it doesn't say man. It's not saying man can become gods. Well, okay. The point I made to Bro was: Are you trying to tell me, I said? Are you trying to tell me that the Jesuits cannot translate? <laughs> From Latin, I'm assuming, into good, clear English. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Jesuits, I have, I have their, uh, I have the also on my bookshelf. I have the uh, canons and decrees of the Council of Trent as well. I bought that off Amazon as well. Which oh, again, yeah. I made sure to get a deal because I don't want to give the Jesuits too much of my money. So I made sure to get yeah. a deal off this one as well. But basically, I, I, I was going to do, I did, I, I actually showed some of this in one, a couple of my videos about. And my, my video series called Catholic Doctrine of Devils, I often will show like a Catholic source at the beginning. But I think one yeah. of the videos I showed the uh, Jesuit, I think it was my conditional security video where it was Catholic Doctrine of Devils conditional security, where I showed the, the Council of Trent denying eternal security and, and then obviously you're obviously refuting it. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Whenever Catholics tell me, oh, you don't understand Catholicism, well, on my bookshelf, I have like 20 different, or at least like 10 different Catholic books. So I, yeah. I, have, a lot, I have their sources. So I'm not ignorant of what they say. Yeah. In fact, in my videos against Catholicism, I often would quote from one of their sources before I refute it. The, I mean, they deny evil. Uh, they deny God's creation. They admit to evolution or some variation. Of it. I did a video a while back about the Pope actually like yoking up with atheists. So yeah. And plus, and too, it's like, and plus, too, you got the Rational Wiki website, which is the atheist website, actually defending the Catholic Church, and they have a whole article ripping on so-called anti-Catholicism. Yeah. They can't even get through Genesis chapter one without saying, "Oh, that can't be true." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, that is so true, Jeff. But who are you talking about, Rational Wiki or the Catholics? Catholic. Oh. And Rational Wiki. Well, yeah. Well, what's the difference anyway? I mean, like in in their article about Brian Dellinger, you know, I will I will say this in their article about Brian Dellinger, they had a whole section. Called beating back popery, where it's just basically a big the rant about all the anti-Catholic bigots in the twentieth or the nineteen twenties or whatever. It's like, wait a second, I thought you guys were atheists. Why are you defending the Catholic Church? I thought you were against all religion. Yeah, <laughs> but atheism is a religion, John. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, as an ex-atheist, I can testify to that. It is, a, it is a. I mean, there are people who actually call themselves atheist fundamentalists. So, yeah, like Richard Dawkins at one point called himself an atheist fundamentalist. So it is, it is. As an ex-atheist, I can say, yeah, it is. It is definitely a religion. I mean, the fact that there's state-enforced atheism in China shows that it is a dogma, basically. Is there uh, are there any charismatic atheists, John? I, I would argue that like Richard Dawkins, Chris Chris Hitchens, and the other guys. I'd argue that they're kind of they're kind of like your atheist equivalent of any like Christian fundamentalist, basically. Yeah. Aren't they both English? Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are, are British. That's the fun part. Oh, and Stephen Hawking too. He's another one as well. Or oh, Pentecostal atheists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I just love it how how Dawkins openly like just calls himself a, a atheist fundamentalist, but then it's like, but then, but then all they'll say all atheism is is just a lack of belief in gods. So is that why they have state enforced atheists? But how do you enforce a lack of belief in gods if it's not like a dogma? Well, you can't deny. You can't admit to the negative without. Uh, acknowledging the positive yeah because for, i mean in that word atheism the doctrine of not god yeah so that, why, that's, that's, that's what atheism means god? Why, because, why the, do because theism is the belief in god well atheism would just be not a not belief in god just like how asexual would mean you're not sexual yeah, or yeah. anything yeah but they have to make some reference to god or not god in their belief don't they <laughs> Yeah. Why can't they find another name for themselves? And the thing, the thing is, too, is that, you know, 
they'll they'll make fun of us. You can't say how do you know it exists? Well, have you seen the Big Bang? Well, then how do you know it exists? And and, and every time they always get stumped whenever they say it, because you know, if you can't and they'll always try to find some way to explain it or whatever, but like, but it's like if their argument is that if you can't see it, it's not real. Well, then if you haven't seen the Big Bang, how do you know it's real? Or if you haven't seen evolution, how do you know it's real? Or if you haven't go through all the atheist belief, you haven't seen it, how do you know it's real? You know? Uh, the Big Bang is uh, a Jesuit uh, theory. John. Oh yeah, I I, uh, I would honestly would not be surprised if that was true. There probably is a Jesuit connection to that thing. I, I would not I would I would not be surprised one bit actually. Yeah, Jesuit. Look it up, John. Uh, Jesuit scientist. Uh, was it was it Lemaitre or no no not Lemaitre. No, but uh, anyway, definitely a Jesuit. Um, Jesuit scientist works for the Vatican, uh, an ast astronomer or something. I can't remember. Actually, actually, the thing is too is that you know when you hear about all the Catholic Church burned scientists, well, there's truth to that because they actually burned scientists who taught biblical science. There is that, you know. But yeah, I mean, if if the big, I mean, I, I personally, I I definitely believe that the Big Bang was probably invented by Jesuit. I I definitely I believe that's definitely true. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, the fact that the Pope, I mean, and I, I love it too when Catholics say, oh, we have an unbroken line of, of succession from Peter. It's funny because no, all, their, all, their, all their recent Popes have not only contradicted what Peter said, but they even contradicted other Popes. I mean, like, like yeah. got, I mean, I mean, the fact that the Popes are, are so ecumenical is a direct contradiction of the Catholic Church's historical doctrine of there's no salvation outside of the Church, you know? Yeah. So, so, so not only not only do they contradict Peter, they can't even be consistent with their own teachings about, about well, Catholicism being one true. About Catholicism they, being the one true religion and all other religions being false. They cannot uh, qualify as apostles because they yeah. cannot the yeah. criteria in Acts chapter 1. And plus, too, it's like if, they're, if Peter's their apostle, well, Peter said in Acts chapter 4, verse 10 to 12, that Jesus is the only way of salvation. But then you got Pope Francis welcoming yeah. the Muslims and welcoming the Jews and welcoming the Buddhists and Hindus and everybody else. And even yeah. actually like participating in that pagan ritual about three years ago. You know, and, yeah. and, and again, that, that again, even even by Catholics, like historical doctrine, that would have been considered heresy back in the Middle Ages. I mean, I mean, because even even by Catholic standards, that would have been considered heresy. But like if you if he was to do that back in the Middle Ages, he would have probably been arrested as a heretic back then, too, by the Catholic Church. I don't know. I, 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 just, I just know that Pope Francis is so liberal and ecumenical that even many Catholics find him to be too far. And then many Catholics are becoming pre-Vatican II Catholics because they just find him to be so liberal. Yeah. I mean, there are Catholics calling him, like when he did that pagan ritual, there are Catholics calling him out on that. And there are Catholics saying, hey, like it's against, it's against the church teachings to participate in a, in a pagan ritual like that. I mean, I mean, again, the Spanish Inquisition basically persecuted Muslims, but then you got Pope Francis butting up with the Muslims. So it's like it, it's contradicting his own church, basically. Well, I would say, and I know certain people would call me a fool for saying so, but I can see connections between Islam and Roman Catholicism. It may not have been a a purposeful invention of the Catholic so-called church, but I do think that they. I think they used the the Arab Muslim religion thingy to try and conquer Jerusalem. They tried to use them as a proxy army, only it backfired on them. But it's, from the, the thing I the writing the story I heard was that basically Muhammad that that there was like this very wealthy Arab, um, I guess Arab girl or whatever, and apparently she ended up becoming a Catholic nun and she had a big influence on Muhammad's life. But what happened was that. Asia. Yeah, that, that that's the name. I forget what her name was, but basically what happened was is that um, it, well, basically what happened was is that uh, the Arabs took over Jerusalem, or the Muslim the Arab Muslims took over Jerusalem. But then at, at that point they had become so powerful that they they basically just st they disobeyed the Pope, and then at that point called the Pope an infidel, which was essentially what kind of launched the Crusades. But but yeah. the thing is, the Catholic Church uh, only began persecuting Muslims when the Muslims turned against the Pope and. and Get, began yeah. calling him began began calling him an infidel basically and said that you know Jerusalem's ours and then of course the, and of course you know and, and yeah sure I mean you know the the then since then there have been tensions between the Catholics and the Muslims where like the Inquisitions they'd persecute the Muslims and the the yeah. Go Inquisition and everything else but like historically they, they just used the Muslims as their and I, I'd even argue too even as they were persecuting Muslims there were cases where they would sell you know Jews for example to Muslims even even while they're persecuting the, the Muslims. Oh, they used to do that, didn't they? 
Yeah, I, 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 I actually heard that even during the Spanish Inquisition, despite the fact that they were were persecuting Muslims, there were cases where they would sell Jews to Muslims as slaves. I, 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 I heard, I heard that. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it won't surprise me if it was. John, how many people do you think have been murdered by the Catholic so-called Church since the early fourth uh, century? I, I'd argue like well over a million. I mean, at, at best. I, I've heard 80 million. I, I mean, there's a video on YouTube, a lamp in the dark, mm. and others. I think Eric had mentioned some numbers. Yeah. It's difficult to get numbers, isn't it? Because the only place you could really get the 100% truth on it, not that they would be interested in truth, is well, the Vatican could tell you exactly who and how many. Yeah, and, and 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 the numbers I heard that was just for Europe. I mean, I mean that we're not just for Europe. We're not talking about India and all and Mexico and all those other places too. That's just in Europe alone. It's about well over a couple million. I think it's a lot more than a million, John. I thought it was about eighty million. Yeah, I mean, just in Europe. I, I mean, I I heard I heard one person say that worldwide, it would have like made people like Mao Zedong and Stalin. It would have made them blush. Well, you could argue that, um, well, Stalin, he wouldn't blush. He was a Jesuit. Yeah. Oh, and, and also Stalin, Stalin also, uh, because, you know, when you're a white, when I was a white supremacist, I was told all oh, that the Jews created communism. Well, Stalin actually hated Jews. I, I, I actually looked into this. Stalin did not like Jews at all. I mean, I mean, Stalin, he, even, even in his early days, he often uh, resorted to a lot of anti-Jewish arguments against, you know, Jews being like, because there were, there was like in the early, like what happened with the Russian revolution is that, like the czars in Russia were very anti-Jewish, and, and many Jews did actually support communism just as a way to get away from the czar. But but Joseph Stalin had always always hated Jews, and when he got into power, he actually began to purge Jews from the Communist Party of Russia. And 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 there's even argument. There's actually uh, before he died in, in 1953, there actually were I think uh, uh, like five different like large like camps being built, and there was rumors that those camps were actually for for were going to be for the Jews, but then he died before they before they could be completed. So, but 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 there there was rumors that he was actually planning his own like little Holocaust of the Jews, and that's what those camps were being built for. But then he, he ended up dying of, of cancer before they could be finished. But yes, well, the, but yeah, go ahead. They were murdered. I mean, the communists or the Bolsheviks, same thing really. Were murdering people right from nineteen seventeen, where they at the beginning of the Russian Revolution. Yeah, well, they they first they well they first they they got rid of the 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 royal family of Russia, but then they also, I mean, since I mean they've been murderers since the beginning. I mean that's the thing. And it's kind of funny how one thing they all have in common is they all hate Jews. That, that's and Christians too, obviously. They, they hate both of us. And, and, and why I mean Jews? I'm talking about like racial racial Jews. I'm not talking about the Jews who who are not even ethnically Jewish but just follow the religion of Judaism. I'm talking about like racial Jews. You know, that, that's what I mean by that. Because everyone, like when you go on Gab, you hear things about oh, communism is Jewish and that kind of stuff. Well, there, there might have been some Jews involved in communism from the beginning, but Stalin definitely did, did not like Jews one bit. In, in fact, apparently when, when, it, when Hitler and Stalin, when they actually were uh, allies before they turned on each other, uh, when Hitler was actually going to like visit Russia, Stalin actually ordered his party to actually like like get rid of any kind of Jewish influence, so so Hitler would would not be upset or whatever. So so Stalin definitely was not a fan of, of Jewish people, like like racially definitely. Then Roosevelt and Churchill were best mates with Stalin, and nobody. Yeah, there's a picture, a picture of all of them sitting together in a little chair, all buddy buddies. It's like it's like Stalin was was worse than Hitler in many ways. So why, like like why would you want to be associated with him? You know. Mm. I mean, Stalin had a bigger kill. I mean, Hitler, like, 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 I've heard, like, like the most, like, like Hitler with the Holocaust. If you have the Jews plus all the other non-Jewish victims, it would amount to roughly about eleven million. But Stalin, I mean, his kill count would 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 have made Hitler blush. I mean, in many ways. Yeah, I mean, he, Stalin was actually funded by America and Britain. Yeah. Um, they knew exactly what Stalin was doing. You can't tell me they didn't. I mean. It's not like British intelligence is stupid. Yeah, and it wasn't like Stalin was hiding. It wasn't like Stalin was hiding. 
like it wasn't like Stalin was trying to hide what he was doing too. I mean, he just openly did it. He didn't really care. I mean, it wasn't like he was trying to hide what he was doing either. Not to change the subject, but any thoughts on what they're doing now with Russia? Uh, well, Still, as, a, as a Russian, as a Russian they... myself, as a Russian myself, actually, I, uh, I honestly, I mean, but Putin, I think he is probably, uh, well, he definitely has connections to Rome. That's one thing, but but with Putin, I, I just think his warmonger is a, is a bit unnecessary. That, that, I mean, that that's my opinion as a Russian. Who, who, by the way, still has, who, by the way, still has his Russian citizenship too. I never, I never got rid of it. Yeah. So I, I could, actually, I could, I could, li- I actually could live in Russia if I wanted to. But I just don't. I'm obviously not going to do that because if I did go, I probably would get forcibly conscripted into the army because they have a draft. Putin is ex KGB, so cool. yeah. And, and Putin still actually is like he li- he likes us. My sorry, my cat is just getting in the wagon. But 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 basically, Putin he he is ex KGB and he also um, is essentially. Like pro Soviet in many ways, like he still kind of like admires the Soviet Union. I mean, like you look at Russia, like you look at Russian military parades. He basically will ha- will bring back all the Soviet uniforms and that kind of stuff and everything. The thing with Ukraine is, is that I've heard it described as being the breadbasket of Europe uh-huh. because they've got massive uh, wheat and barley oh. and all that kind of. Uh, oh. Speaking of that, by the way, I actually read that Putin is actually using these these Muslim jihadis from Chechen to help invade Ukraine. So I find that kind of interesting. Oh, oh yeah. I wonder if they're going to start the Ustasha again. I don't know. Maybe. You heard oh, of I Ustasha. find back to the Ustasha. The, the Ustasha they hated Jews too. I really, I found out as well. It's funny oh, yeah. how all these, it's funny how all these guys they all have they all they all shit they all have this this kind of. They all share this kind of hate for Jews and Christians. It's, it's always weird yeah. to do that. Well, the Ustasha are essentially Catholic. They are. Yeah. I've never heard of those. Mm. Well, I think we call them Stasi or Ustasha. Have you heard of Anti Pavlik? Yeah, he was a wicked devil. He, he, he was a really wicked yeah. guy. I think he was Catholic. I'm not sure if he was Jesuit or not. I haven't really looked. I know that one thing that that with World War II, what the Catholics did was that was that they had Jewish Catholics. They they would hide them in the basement of the Vatican, so that then in case in case Hitler lost the war, they could say, "Well, look, we protected Jews. We, we were on the good side." They would have been rich Jews as well. Yeah, and and it would have always been Jewish who, who were who were following Catholicism, so they would just comply. But the, but then when the, when Hitler eventually lost the war, and they, they did this they did this beforehand, they could say, "Well, look, we hit we protect the Jews. So look, uh, we're the good guys now." But they forget the fact is that one time I actually posted about this on Inst- I made a post about this on Instagram where I showed that that Hitler himself actually admired the Jesuits. Yeah, well, he based his Gestapo on them. Yeah, and, and, and finally, it's a Wikipedia article, and this is the kind of propaganda on Wikipedia. The Wikipedia article said, "Well, Hitler admired the Jesuits, but he actually hated them too." It's like what? Yeah. But uh, like you said that Hitler persecuted the Jesuits. It's like so. Is there he admired them, but then he persecuted them? How does that work? Yeah, I don't think Hitler was daft enough to try and persecute the Jesuits. Yeah, I mean, I mean this most... whole this whole narrative. I mean, like, that's why I get sick and tired of hearing that all oh, the Nazis they persecuted the Catholic Church. Well, they may have persecuted individual Catholics and didn't agree with them, but they didn't persecute the Catholic Church. Uh, Liberal because because they they they, 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 they wouldn't have the guts to do it. I mean, they they they, they would the Catholic Church had too, too much power over them. They wouldn't have the guts to do it. Well, Hitler couldn't. I mean, I've stated. I mean, I got to treat like a fool. I think if I remember correctly. Because I said that uh, Hitler couldn't have got into power without the Catholic centre party over there, Culture Camp, uh, a guy called oh, yeah. Franz Papen. I, was, I, was got... thinking, I was thinking, even even if Hitler even if Hitler did hate the Jesuits, he he, he couldn't he couldn't do anything about it because they they you know if he if he tried to persecute them, they'd just take him out. Yeah. So so I mean. Maybe, maybe maybe he did hate the. I mean maybe he did hate them. Who knows, you know. But but what could he really do about it, you know? Other well, than just write about, other than just write about it in his personal journal or whatever. I think he was Catholic essentially. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Wikipedia article claims that he hated the Jesuits and and, and persecuted them, which I, I just think that's a little bit crap. I mean, maybe he, maybe he did hate them, but he certainly didn't persecute them. He, he didn't have the guts to do that. No, he couldn't have survived. He wouldn't have got financing from America. I mean, Hitler was financed by America. Yeah, well, the eugenics by, uh, got Bush. Yeah, and even even and if Hitler did start if Hitler did start persecuting the Jesuits, they would have just taken him out in no time. So, 
He he knew he couldn't do that. Yeah. What are you eating there, John? Oh, my pizza. Oh, it turned up, did it? Yeah. It's cold now. I don't know if it's still on. So yeah, so Hitler, he, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But if he did hate the Jesuits, he um, wasn't much he could do about it because, like, 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 whenever someone tries to do something about the Jesuits, they always get taken out. Yeah, every time. I mean, like, like I've always said too, you know, Saddam Hussein, he kicked uh, the oh, yeah. Jesuits out of Iraq. Well, the Russian Revolution, you know, there was, it was. I, I heard, I heard a theory that the Russian Revolution was actually almost like revenge against the Tsar for for kicking the Jesuits out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, here, here's the thing too. You know, the Jesuits have been kicked out of like what 14 different countries. You don't get you don't get kicked out of that many countries if you're just wonderful, fine people. There's a reason why they get, get kicked out of so many countries, and it's not because they're just fine, wonderful, wonderful people. It's more than 14, John. It's near a 70. Oh, I, I I I heard it was 14, but but again, it's like you don't you don't get kicked out of that many countries if you're just like I heard the analogy. You know, if you if you go to a college and you get kicked out of 14 colleges, chances are you're the problem, not the colleges. You know, so like, like if the Jesuits are being kicked out of that many countries, yeah, it's because it's because they're the, they're the problem. You know, they're not, it's not because they're, they're like like you don't get kicked out of that many countries for being fine, wonderful people. Yeah, John, you can get your videos automatically uploaded to Rumble because mm. I haven't been on Rumble in two weeks now. Oh, and I'm just going to share a screen. They've been uploaded today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of like Rumble better than BitChute because I find with BitChute there's kind of a lot of problems with the site, but Rumble, they don't have they don't have those same problems. Oh. All right. I even heard too that that what was it what was that that uh, person's name from Austria who like or Austria Hungary who was like that royal royal person who got like stabbed in the chest by a Jesuit or whatever what was what was her name I can't remember her name but like she like she was like another example of, of a member of the royal fam of a, of a royal family who was assassinated by the Jesuits I mean I mean the uh, last thing about the Jesuits is that they're kicked out of countries because they try to assassinate leaders who who go against them so. Did Catherine the Great? No, I, I know that Elizabeth the First of of England. She she had like several attempts on her life by by the by the Catholics. Yeah, which all have would... failed. So, yeah, yeah. Excellent woman. Yeah, she was pretty good. I mean, and the thing is too is that you know if you want to get an idea of what the Jesuits are like, I'll, I encourage anyone to just read the secret instructions of the Jesuits. It shows the kind of murderous people they are. Yeah. It's still are. that Inquisition office is still open for business, John. Oh yeah, so and guess what? Pope Benedict was actually was the head of that office. The office, what was it called? The office of, of doctrine of faith or whatever, whatever it was yeah. called. Yeah, they just changed the name. It's the same people. Yeah, it's the same people that that organized the the mass expulsion of, of Muslims and Jews and everyone else from Spain, but then they they just changed it to a more, I guess, politically correct title. The warming an oven up for you, John. Who knows? Bon oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, they've got a bonfire ready for you. Who does? Oh, yeah. Of course they do. Just don't yeah. let, let Fro come and visit you. I heard that Brian Denling has sent a box of wood over there to the Vatican. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's kind of funny when Brian Denling one time said, I actually heard Brian say that, oh, like remember that one time he did that he did that video called like a pathetic <laughs> attack on my ministry or whatever. He's like responding to Tony's video about him. Well, basically, there was one part of the video where he says, "Oh, I had a book sent to me by Muslims." I'm like, "Why is a why are Muslims sending you books, Brian?" <laughs> yeah, but, but then at one point, but then, but then at one but then at one point he he says something about how the Vatican sends him threatening letters. It's like, I don't think you're that much of a threat. Yeah, to that, Brian. No, 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 no. That's just no. The, no. But the Vatican, Brian, like, 
it's the all the Vatican sends me letters. It's like, oh yeah, sure they do. <laughs> okay, and then, I think I said this on, about Ryan. a year ago, John. All it needs is a phone call from some Jesuit, <laughs> a local sort of Jesuit, whatever, uh, to uh, Google. Oh, just dump Brian's uh, channel, will you? Yeah, and it'll be done in two minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, seriously, they can just call. They, they'll just tell YouTube, "Hey, get rid of Brian's yeah. channel." They just do it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if they wanted to get rid of him that fast, they could just tell YouTube, they could tell the internet provider, hey, get rid of his channel and blacklist his IP address so you can never make a social media account ever again. And that'll be that. But they don't do that because why? Like, he's not a threat to them. No. They, no. Because they would just tell they would just tell YouTube to, to ban him. And then they would tell his, his uh, uh, internet provider to bu- the, basically blacklist his IP address. So, or or they tell they tell every social media profile to blacklist his IP so he can't make another social media profile ever again. Well, there's other ways of doing it. They could just box him in and make him think he's getting around the world with all his views. Or, yeah, or, they, or they could just shadow ban him where, like, where, like, you just don't get any views. Well, he'd get views, but they'd be artificial. And they, I mean, I don't know. Well, well they, they would just be among his followers. But when you shadow ban, like, nobody can see your content except people who already follow you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, and, even, and even then, too, people, oftentimes your followers will not even be notified about your videos. You know? Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. But but like if, if if he was that much of a threat to them, he would have already been gone by now. Oh yeah, I mean, he would have been gone long before now. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff on exposing them. He would have been gone long before now. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Absolutely. he would he would have been like Eric Phelps on his like seventh or eighth YouTube channel by now. Yeah, isn't Eric on? He's got his own website though, hasn't he, Eric? Yeah, so you know it's hard. It's hard to get rid of when you have your own web domain because you're paying for it at that point. Yeah, and even then they can play about with it. Yeah, even even then they can mess around with you too right, in that area as well. Yeah, because all the Jesuits have to do is go to the the, the owner of the company, basically hold up a picture of their family and say, "Hey, you know, it'd be shame if anything would happen to them, so get rid of this guy." That pizza is noisy, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm, I, I I'm, I'm like right after my mic. I apologize. Oh, I'm, all, I'm only kidding. John, I'm only kidding with you. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, and it's funny, too, because YouTube, you know how the woman who runs YouTube is like a Jewish woman? Well, they try to use that as see YouTube is run by Jews. It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a Jewish CEO, but yeah, I guarantee you she has some connection to the Pope. I mean. Yeah, in one way or another. In fact, yeah. Twitter is owned by a couple of Jesuits. Oh, and, and plus, and plus too, you know, they, they've banned content that's anti-Catholic. So it's like, you know, I mean, I mean, when I mean, and plus too, I didn't argue too. She couldn't even become a CEO if if she wasn't like given that position by Rome, basically. Yeah. Oh, government, it's the same thing. Yeah, and, and it goes back to the thing of all these these high level Jews in power. You know, they, they don't get to their position without the Pope or or without without Rome. So, you know. So, so while there is an element of truth to the Jewish control, it's only half true because they're they're they 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 they, they would basically be nothing without the Pope. Like these billionaire Jews are not, you know, telling the, the trillionaire Pope what to do. Hmm. Plus, the fact is too, the Pope has like di- complete diplomatic immunity. I remember when um. Oh when, yeah. When, when, for example, the um, when the whole sex scandal was coming out with with uh, Benedict covering up for the the uh, pred- predatory priests who were touching little boys, Obama came out and said, "Hey, we can't prosecute him because he has complete diplomatic immunity. We can't, we can't touch him. You know, he he, he oh, can't. Be, you know, I mean, I mean, like Obama, like Obama, like just flat out said, you know, hey, you know, we we can't, we there's nothing we can do about it. We can't prosecute him. He has complete immunity. Well, the Roman Catholic. Uh... Leaders in various countries, they have diplomatic immunity. Now, it's funny, they're the only religion where the leaders have diplomatic immunity. Yeah. But I, mean, I, 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 I guarantee you, if I was to go to a country as a representative of, you know, the, the body of Christ, I would not have diplomatic immunity. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't get that. I'd tie into the fact that they like, say the Vatican is its own country. Yeah, it, yes. it, 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 it's its own country. Yeah. yeah. And it, has, it has it has ambassadors to the UN. It has a seat in the UN and everything else. 
they've only just raised the legal age of consent in the Vatican to uh, 16. Oh, and here's another fun part too. Do you know that, that that gay sex has actually been legal in the Vatican since eighteen since the eighteen hundreds? It's been legal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, homosexuality, homosexual sex has actually been legal in the Vatican since since the eighteen hundreds. Oh yeah. They were probably bang at it during the Inquisitions as well, abusing people. Well, that's, that's the thing too. Is that I actually looked into this. So during the Spanish Inquisition, uh, men who engaged in homosexuality were actually burned at the stake. But it was kind of funny because the majority of the sodomites burned were actually clergy in the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> so they're burning sodomites at the stake, but the majority of the sodomites are burning at the stake for doing sodomite acts over the clergy. That's the fun part about it. Mm. But that's the, that's, the, that's the ironic part about it. Is that is it is, is that is it the, the majority because because homosexuality was illegal under Catholic Europe, but the majority of the, the sodomites were the clergy, man. Don't encourage fro. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any way of getting fro to leave Catholicism. I don't know why he's so. Well, I mean, I, I like, like my comments back and forth. Him. I mean, I had like so many threads back and forth. Him. I like would, would, would like refute every single point you give, and he just wouldn't, he wouldn't budge. Yeah. I was thinking about Catholic. I've argued with Catholics before. They'd give like ten different questions. I'd answer all ten of them, and they give like ten more and answer all ten of them, and then they, yeah. they just won't budge. No matter, no matter what you you can refute yeah. all their points, and they won't budge a single bit. I think what they've done, John, is I don't know how they work it, how it's done, but. It's like almost like the uh, the Catholic religious system has the ability somehow, because of its demonic uh, control, to get Catholics to actually brainwash themselves with Catholic doctrine and dogmas. And I think the main problem is too is that they're lost; they're not saved. So of course the natural oh, yeah. manager. I mean, yeah. The natural man can't he, can't see the things of God. So, like, no, like it doesn't matter how much scripture you quote them; they can't understand it. You know, and whenever you quote scripture, they always say, "Well, you see, that's just your interpretation." And and they'll quote they'll quote like what some saint wrote about. They'll quote this some oh well, the saint said about this or about the verse or whatever because they they can't understand God's word because they don't have the Holy Ghost. So they have to. Yeah. But I mean, I was I, like, if I just just to, if I just today actually I was arguing with some Catholics on Instagram, and and, and one of them openly said, "Oh, uh, you know." The cat, the, like the, they, he said something, but he said something where like the Catholic, he said basically that the you can't, that basically you need the church to read the Bible, you can't read it yourself. It's like yeah, because they can't, they can't yeah. read God's word themselves. They don't understand it. They are forced into isogetism. Yeah. Oh, and it's funny too. It's funny they, they they claim we use private interpretations. Well, isogetism is like the epitome of, of private interpretations. Yeah. Well, they have to reference themselves to their catechism before they come to scripture. So they. Bring their catechism to the Bible, assuming they've got one, which I doubt. Yeah, yeah, if they even have a Bible. And, and, and then when they have a Bible, they have the, you know. They interpret, it through, they interpret yeah. it through the lens of their catechism. Yeah, exactly. Like, like they'll, they'll get their Bible out, they'll, they'll get it on the bookshelf, have to blow the dust off it because it's been gathering dust for so long, open it up and get any, rid of any cobwebs inside of there, and then enforce their own doctrine into the text when it's not even in there. Yeah. I remember I had a cat when I was in high school. I had a Catholic friend. I, I, I went to I, I went to his place to he was his birthday party. I literally did not see any Bible in his, in his entire like like he showed me around his place. I didn't see one Bible, and, and he was supposedly no. like a very devout Catholic. I didn't see a single Bible. I saw I saw catechisms. I saw uh, what different prayer books. I didn't see one Bible, not a single one. No, you wouldn't. I, I, I didn't even see any scripture or quotations on the wall. I mean, like there's none of that. And, and this, this is this is back when I was an atheist, and I, I and even as an atheist, I thought it was weird. Uh, why don't you have a Bible? You know, I mean, I thought you were Catholic. And this is back when I was an atheist. Like even as an atheist, I always kind of knew there was something that made Catholics distinct from like people who call themselves Christians. Yeah. I think tying back to what you just said, Bob, I was just thinking about it. It's like they literally cannot accept the words in the Bible without. Spinning them to what they want them to say. Yeah, they do. I mean, I mean, like, 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 I did a video recently 
uh, it was it was a uh, uh, First Timothy three fifteen about Catholic eisegesis. Whenever they see the church, they just think Catholic. You know, when, whenever yeah. they see whenever they see like like when they go to Matthew sixteen eighteen, they'll, they'll see oh Jesus started the church. They just they in their minds they think Catholic. You know, even though it appears nowhere in the text, which is what their eisegesis they're forcing their own doctrine into the text instead of just letting Scripture speak for itself. Hmm. You know, and of course too that like they'll they'll go to like verses here and there out of context. Like like that one like, like when they try to use what was it John six fifty four they use that verse, and then I showed the Catholic the con I explained to him the context of what it's saying. And he, and he just he rejected it. He didn't, he didn't accept it. It's like it says, there's like a veil over their eyes. Well, there is. I mean, they don't they don't have the Holy Ghost. They can't understand God's word. So I mean, it doesn't matter how much you explain it. Which is why it's just point. It's really pointless to argue with them because they they like you're just arguing with a lost person. Like you can't they can't understand God's word. I think it's more than a veil, though, Jeff. I think it might be an upturned bookie. <laughs> or it could just be a demonic deception. You know, like just the devils are just blinding them. Who knows? <clears throat> Because I, I I explained to the Catholic that you know in in for, in First Timothy three fifteen when it talks about the church being the pillar and ground of the truth. Well, what is the church? It's the body of Christ, and who is the truth? It's Jesus Christ. So when you're in Jesus Christ, you are indeed the pillar and ground of the truth because Jesus Christ is the truth. It's not talking about some physical organization in Rome. And of course, he didn't accept that. He just he just said I was a heretic for saying that. But yeah, that's what they always do. That, or like, for example, like whenever they see the church, they just think Catholic, even though it's nowhere anywhere in the text. In fact, the word Catholics mean, means universal. You don't find universal, the concept of that in, in, in scripture either. In fact, the one time where you do find that is in, is in Genesis chapter 11, and it's being condemned. I'm just thinking, though, like, what would it take for Fro to finally just repent and humble himself? Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit, really, because he's so um, embedded. Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the kind of thing where no amounts of debates or arguments are going to get through to him. It's like you just have to pray yeah. for him. Yeah. The, it, you won't be I, I, I know because I, I I've been going back and forth with him in the comments for a while. I would just answer every oh, single yeah. point. He, I, I would answer every single point he gives, and he just won't budge. No, he won't. Hmm. There's pride involved, I think. There, yeah. Well. I just think too that he just doesn't, like, like I just think too that you know he just doesn't want to give up what what he's always known. Basically, like he's always known Catholic. He doesn't just, just want to give that up. It's hard for him. Well, I find it strange because Fro, I don't know if he's mentioned it to you, used to be involved with the IFB. Oh. And then he left it and became a Catholic. Well, I tried to ask him, I did ask him about why, what the line of reasoning was to go from IFB to Catholicism because. I think for obvious reasons, I didn't understand it. I mean, how do you go? Because to be an IFB, even they believe, I think, you can tell me this, John, that uh, the Catholic so-called church is the whore of Babylon. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, when I was part of the new IFB, you know, it was just a fact that, like, historically, IFB, you could not be part of the IFB without believing that the Pope was, was a Satanist, basically, that the Catholic Church was a whore of Babylon. Like, like that, was require, that was basically a requirement belief for you to be part of the new IFB. Like, if you said the Catholic Church, the Christian Church, they would have thrown you out of every IFB church out there. So, yeah. you know, but, yeah. so, so it, and plus, too, is like, anti-Catholicism is, like, even in the new IFB, you know, anti-Catholic sermons are, they, they do all the time. I mean, yeah. in fact, in fact, listening to Stephen Anderson actually was what convinced me that Catholics were not Christians because he did a lot of anti-Catholic sermons. You know, yeah. So, so he actually, so you know, he actually showed me that Catholics are not Christians. They are, they um, they're Satanists, basically. Yeah. Oh, in fact, like. in fact, in fact, Anderson, you know, to his credit, he did a whole sermon called "To the Romans," and he basically showed just even from the Book of Romans alone, you can refute the entire Catholic Church just from the Book of Romans. You know, it, it was a sermon Stephen Anderson did. You know, to his credit, obviously, you know. I don't agree with them, but but to his credit, he did a whole sermon to showing that even just from the book of like even the book of Romans alone destroys a lot of Catholic theology. 
And, and then Anderson also did two sermons about the Inquisition. He like the first one was called the Roman Catholic Inquisition. The second one was called Drunken with the Blood of the Saints, where he was talking about the Inquisition and how they killed millions. So that that's that is also why I personally I personally don't think Anderson's a Jesuit because he actually did talk about a lot of things that Jesuits typically won't didn't want you to talk about, like like the Inquisitions and like for example he talked about the Catholic. Uh, influence on modern versions. So obviously, at uh, that, like, that's why I don't believe in the Jesuit. I just think he's very deceived. That's all. Because he did talk about things that like Jesuits typically would would not want you to talk about, like the the again the Inquisitions, or and he did he did say too that you know, like he did he did used to say that Catholic Church was Mystery Babylon. So. I'm not sure when he switched to it being America, but like he used in his older sermons, he used to say that the Catholic Church is the mystery of Babylon. In fact, one of his very first sermons he preached was it was it was called the Mother Whore Catholic Church, where he was saying that it's mystery of Babylon. What what do you think of Reuben Israel? He's a very wicked guy. I, I just did a video on him today. Actually, he's a very wicked. He, he's a very profane individual. There was actually there was actually one video where there was one video where he's standing he's standing outside of a Catholic church. I showed it in my video. I, I did on say where he's standing outside of the Catholic church and he says, "This is the way he says. He says we thank God that you spend more time touching little boys than killing people like us." You know, he literally says that verbatim. Oh. And, and and then there's another video where and he also was featured on that BBC documentary America's Hate Preachers. You know, so he he's I think he's he's just propped up by the media to like. As, as like as like you know your hate preacher or whatever, but yeah, he, he's a very wicked guy, and plus a lot, plus a lot of his doctrine is, is, for example, he's a sinless perfectionist. He he does not believe in eternal security. He thinks that he basically is like into the whole, you know, open theism. Uh, what do they call Pelagianism? So yeah, he, he's a he's just basically a papist. That's all he is. I don't know what church you go. To. Uh, uh, a lot of his so-called street preaching is just railing and ranting and just you know picking fights. And that kind of, he doesn't actually give the gospel. The only video I thought was kind of halfway amusing was when he had the Mary statue and he kept. Oh <laughs> yeah, that, that that's pretty funny actually. Yeah, I do I do enjoy that. And then and then seeing the Catholic reaction to that is really funny as well. How they all just get so triggered and smashing that Mary statue. I will give I will give credit where credit is due. That's pretty funny. There's just one, one video I saw of him where he was at this Catholic convention that he goes to every single year. In fact, he does he he goes there so many times that they actually all know who he is. Well, of course, he, he does his usual smashing at the Mary statue. He had like a crowd of Catholics just surrounding him and like trying to get at him, and like you're all like saying Hail Mary around him as he's smashing the statue. It was, it was pretty funny, actually. Is that the one where he had the tampons? They were all <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was a funny one. And then there's one video where he goes to like a Hindu event. He's like wearing a cow suit at this Hindu event or whatever. Because he, he was claiming that that oh like his reasoning was that they had been attacked at the Hindu events before, so he figured I'll just wear a cow suit because they consider cows to be sacred and they won't attack me. And then he, so he actually like wears a cow suit. <laughs> I think it may be a fleshly thing, though, John. Like the flesh kind of likes to see some of that stuff, but yeah, that that's the thing too. I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of it's just it's most just entertainment, you know. Yeah. And, but, I mean, and plus, too, I think the reason why they kind of do they do why the lot of trippers why they do these kind of videos too, is that it's it's like they want to get views and that kind of stuff. I mean, because a lot of these guys don't have jobs. A lot of these guys just make money off this stuff, so they want to have like a kind of a catchy video that will get them lots of views. Well, I see so like have, his his assistant guy. He doesn't even believe the King James is God's word. Yeah, one of his little buddies, Rich Rich Pankowski, who I've I've been exposing on my channel. He yeah he doesn't even believe the King James. In fact, he calls you a cult member if you think that King James Bible is, is like the only. Bible is good, you know. Yeah. And then, and then you got other guys like the what's his name Jesse Morel and all those other guys. The, the, yeah, they're, they're just a, they're they're a, a, a they're a phenomenon of their own. You see that little midget guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, I I have, I have some videos on him as well. He also, he, I mean, he he thinks he's sinlessly perfect, yet he also has a very filthy mouth as well. In a lot of his videos. 
Like there, there's one video I saw, which is actually pretty disgusting, where he actually was was at the Supreme Court when the when they were going to legalize gay marriage back in 2013. And there's one part where he's like going into graphic detail of like homosexual acts. And like, first of all, how do you even know that? First of all, and second of all, like, don't why do you just say that in public? But like, but like, like he has this weird thing where he he'll go into graphic detail of what sodomites do in their bed. It's like, it's disgusting. But you know. And there's one video where he's like, there's like one video because a lot of these guys are Trump. A lot of these guys are, are are fans of Donald Trump too. So, uh, so so he, he so he he goes to the Trump inauguration, and then and then he basically is like is like just yelling about Muslims or whatever. And then at one point, like this guy confronts him with a sign about you know Islamophobia, and he like is just taunting the guy and everything else. And then, you know, I mean, he, he like he's what you would call your um, he, like he's what you call like a shock and awe preacher where he'll do all kinds of crazy stuff to get a crowd and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's one video where like he he was he was like at this Black Lives Matter rally, and then at one point he like starts talking about Michael Brown, and then he gets attacked on camera, and then like this huge fight breaks out, and then you know, and, and of course he he posts the video on YouTube and he gets a ton of views, so, and then he actually gets featured on Infowars and all this other stuff because the video got like like it went viral. And then there's, there's, and there's another crazy video where he's actually like at, at another college campus, and then at one point someone tries to like pour coffee on him, and then he like, and then and then like another fight breaks out. It was, I mean, again, like like you said, a lot of it is just worldly flushy entertainment for a lot of people because it's like, you know, and plus too, a lot of it's just like strife and contention. Like you're purposely going there trying to like you know say provocative things to get people like you know listen to you. So it's like a lot of it's very fleshly. I'm just looking at some of the YouTube videos that are like the screenshots, and it looks like his boots are like just <laughs> three inch heels. Yeah, <laughs> and funny too because the way he dresses. I mean, I heard one person say that he dresses like a 1950, like a 1955 ballroom dancing instructor a lot of times. But but, but it's like he'll <laughs> he'll like he'll go to college campuses and do his, his like thing or whatever, and it's like you know. Oh, and then too, I, I've noticed too uh, with a lot of these tree preachers, a lot of times they get into these. Uh, they oftentimes they get into all these different confrontations with the police quite a lot too. I've noticed like quite a lot as well, where like they're being obnoxious and just you know just just really annoying, and then the police are called on them, and they get into this big huge argument with the police, and then it's like, you know, uh, like, like I just think a lot of them are just agent agent provocateurs a lot of times, like 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 with the whole Westboro Baptist Church thing as well. Like a lot of them are just like agent provocateurs. Because with with Westboro, they kind of their 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 media stint kind of just died down. Like no one really pays attention to them anymore. So then you have these new guys come out, these street preachers who just are kind of the new Westboro. I got a verse for you, John. I'm going to post it in the sure the chat. Mm, amen. Yeah, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. There's actually another verse I wanted to, that's actually relevant to that too. It's, it's um another interesting verse. I'll try to pull it up. But um, and this is a verse that none of these guys are able to follow because they just but it's first Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. It says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, and then it goes on. But yeah, like none of these guys follow that. They just Essentially, what they do is they're just trying to get YouTube views. Hmm. Like, there's, there's one video I saw where they're at this like Sodom event, and the guy's like in this like guy's face, calling him a faggot, and like is like yelling out of the megaphone, and then he gets punched in the face, and then he's like, "Oh, assault! Arrest this guy!" And then it's like, you know, like you're you're you know provoking him. That's what happens when you poke dogs; they're gonna bite. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, like when you get in his face and you call him a faggot and this and that and say like, "Oh, oh, you're disgusting," and then they react and then it's like, "Oh, why'd you hit me?" And then a lot of them are pacifists too, so then they don't even believe in self defense. So then when they do get attacked; they'll just like take it. And then, and then what they do is that instead of fighting back, they just try to take you to court and sue you or something like that instead of fighting back. But yeah, my, my recent video on my channel I did on, on Ruben Israel, which basically just shows clips of him saying all kinds of, of really like like wicked stuff and then it's just showing the kind of fruit the fruit that he produces. 
and and the kind of, and he claims to be sinless. Meanwhile, he, he talks like like that, like like I did when I was an atheist. So where are your videos, John? They're on, they're on my channel, Faithful Servants of Christ. The, the recent videos I made. On YouTube, I'll post it. yeah, on YouTube, Rumble. yeah, YouTube. My 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 strikes wore off, so I just I'm back on YouTube finally. Because whenever I got when, when I got two strikes, I'm like I'm not going to risk it and get a third strike. So I'll just like just leave YouTube till the strikes come go down, which they did just a few days ago. But like you're right, you know, like when you get in someone's face, call them faggot, call them this and that, and they respond, well, hey, you're poking a dog. Don't expect them to just not bite you. And plus, what does the Bible call sodomites? It calls them dogs. And Philippians, I think it's three, two. Mm. I, I guarantee you that's going to be a hate speech for homophobia, for me saying that, but oh well. Well, I don't think they're listening. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like whenever, whenever someone, oh, your hate speech. Well, you might as well just call the Bible hate speech too, because it's all over the place. That's kind of the whole point. Yeah. Like I, I don't follow much Canadian politics, but Trudeau was trying to ban that uh, conversion therapy. Which yeah. Is banning the Bible. I think it's already. I think it's already banned, actually. Yeah. But yeah, but so, conversion therapy was legal for a while, but I think it's already banned at this point. And plus Trudeau even even I mean I mean this this is this is what this is the kind of person Trudeau. I saw a video of him like a couple years back where he literally said, Oh, you know, someone says mankind, he corrects her and says, Oh, people kind. I want to be gender neutral. It's like that yeah. that's the kind that's the kind of like soy boy weirdo that he is. He he doesn't mean to say mankind because he thinks it's not gender neutral. I mean, I, I was I was joking with this with, with one of my friends on Discord. I was saying that like Joe Biden. Is or, or Justin Trudeau is essentially just Joe Biden, but with with more soy boyness and less dementia. Problem is, though, John, is people have the leader they deserve. That's true. Yeah, Trudeau yeah. is simply just a reflection of of the kind of you know nation we are, really. Mm. Just, just like Joe Biden is the kind of reflection of, of the, the majority of America. Fast asleep. Yeah, Biden's a pedo, and he is a. <laughs> oh, and by the way, too, I'm not sure if you saw like Joe Biden's press conference he did on January 20th. Oh man, it was just a disaster. I mean, there was one time where one point where somebody asked him a question, and then at one point he like forgets the question halfway through, pauses, and then like struggles to think of an answer. And this is with a teleprompter too. I mean, the guy is clearly not mentally fit to be running anything. And there was one video I saw of him where he, where this is during one of his campaign rallies. He, so he's running for president, right? Well, he says, I'm here to announce my campaign for Senate. I mean, president. It looked like he actually says, oh, I'm running for Senate. No, wait, sorry, I mean, president. <laughs> he actually thinks he confuses it with Senate for one, at one point. I'll, I'll try to find the video. It's actually really funny. But there's like, like so many clips of Joe Biden just failing to just speak properly that like, like it is very possible that he could be like developing dementia considering he is at that age. He's seventy nine. Like my, my my grandfather and my my mom's side of the family, he he had dementia. So, uh, and he had he had a lot of the same symptoms that Joe Biden is, is displaying. Where is that video? My view is, John, is we gotta pray for our country, but uh, yeah, don't put your faith in man. Yeah, exactly. Especially you know Trudeau. I I honestly don't. Trust anything the guy says, but hey, you know, pray for your leaders, pray for your country. That is that is biblical. And plus, too, you know the whole truck, the whole trucker convoy thing. You know there are there are some people in Canada who are you know not given into the whole woke, politically correct, you know, mob mentality. Hmm. I mean, the, the trucker convoy. I saw a bunch of articles claiming that they're right wing, Islamophobic, homophobic, this and that because they were they were supposedly a bunch of right wing people in the trucker convoy. So. 
you know, if that is true about them, then there are some people left in Canada who don't or aren't just a bunch of woke liberals. Where is that video? It's pretty, uh, let me see. I think he got rid of it. I don't know if it didn't. <laughs> the problem too well, is the go ahead. in our country is they're not godly. Yeah, that's the thing too. Our, our conservatives are just no, are just basically liberals. They're just liberals of, of ten years ago. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, our, our premier here in Ontario, our quote unquote conservative premier actually marched in a, in a gay pride rally, which it, it's funny too, by the way, too, because his brother was was named Rob Ford. He was the mayor of Toronto. His brother actually ha actually hated like homosexuals like a lot, but but his, but his, now his his younger brother is now just like a you know marches in their pride rallies. But like Rob Ford, when he was still alive, he actually did not like sodomites at all. In fact, there's one video I saw of him where it was at his annual Ford Fest barbecue, where like a bunch of his supporters actually attacked, like just beat up a bunch of, of people holding rainbow flags at, at the thing. So that was the kind of people they were. That was the kind of that was the kind of person he was at least. But now his brother is just the complete opposite of him. I find it funny too that one video where Joe Biden's like falling asleep during one of his during this thing or whatever. That was funny. That hence why call, that hence why some people call him sleepy Joe Biden, because he actually fell asleep one time. Oh here it is. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, I'm posting it in the description. This is really this is really funny. It it just shows the kind of you know, mental capacity Joe Biden has. I'll watch that later. It's also funny too because Joe Biden, his approval rating is just falling apart. I mean, he, like I heard his, his, last time I checked, his approval rating was like in the low thirties. So his approval rate ever ever since his handling of the whole Afghanistan situation, his approval rating has just just dropped. And 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 his running mate Kamala Harris, hers is not any better. I heard and hers is even worse actually than Joe Biden's. But but last time I checked, both theirs were like in the low thirties at least. Shall I play this, John? Yeah, yeah, believe me, it's really funny. You play it. <laughs> it's actually really I, like when I saw it, I was just dying laughing when I saw it. Released this morning by Politico Morning Consult, found 49% of registered voters disagreeing with the statement Joe Biden is mentally fit. Not even a majority of Democrats who responded. Uh, strongly affirmed that statement. Why do you suppose such large segments of the American electorate have come to harbor such profound concerns about your cognitive fitness? Thank you. I have no idea. Where am I? I'm right here, sir. I'm right here. Okay, so the best way to get something done, if you, if you hold near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to Anyway, my name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over if you like what you see. Help out if not both the other by give me a look though, okay? But we've all seen the pictures. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. I'm not supposed to be answering all these questions. I'm supposed to leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. And we're going to provide a pathway, a pathway for 11 million citizens. If the other guy had voted for the, the well, I don't think get into that. I won't get going. Look. What's your reaction to that? I, I wonder about his uh, grasp. Even Dr. King's assassination did not have the worldwide impact that George Floyd's mm -hmm. death did. It's my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is my, oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. Not a joke. Not a joke. Fact. Not a joke. Fact. Not a joke.
All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, it's Chris, I mean, but Chris. anyway. I just did Chris. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just did Chuck. I tell you what, man, these are back to back. Anyway. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Go to Joe 30330. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's all about round the clock sex. It's all. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's do it. Get vaccinated. And repeatedly throughout this interview with David Muir, which was recorded this afternoon, President Biden seems confused. For real. You think I'm joking? I'm not joking. You hear me? Not a joke. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. <laughs> That's right. Nordy, your Let's Go Brandon shirts from my online store, markdice.com, or click the link in the description below. Or maybe you prefer my F. Joe Biden, want to buy a vowel shirt, and arrest Dr. Fauci shirt, or any of my awesome designs. All available on a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com, or click the link in the description below, and check them out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was and keep in mind this is the guy who holds the nuke launch codes. Just keep that in mind. This is the man that that has access to the nuke launch codes and who basically runs the government. So wonder, wonderful yeah. choice they made. It would be an inspiration to Mr. Putin if he was going to invade, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that when, when I, in fact, I saw pictures of the Russian embassy on their Facebook page posting memes mocking Joe Biden, saying that he, he's not even the Russians see that he's basically not competent to do anything, really. Yeah, they know it. I mean, essentially, what's going on is that his his vice president Kamala Harris is just basically running everything because Joe Biden can't really do can't really do anything himself. Like, there's one thing I saw I heard read about where supposedly he he appointed this this military general, and the next day he forgot the guy's name. Even though you disappointed them the day before. Well, you don't forget the names of your generals, do you? Surely. Yeah, but then he forgot the guy's name the next the day after you appointed them. You know? Yeah. And his son is no... Uh... Well, yeah, his son is something else. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, he can't keep his trousers on. <laughs> yeah, he's got a bit of a, a, bit of a porno problem. Yeah, but well, but yeah, that, that, that statement, too, where Joe Bunn says, I love kids jumping on my lap. Okay. Yeah. That was <laughs> that was a bit I mean, I mean, I mean, who, I mean, who else think? Who else think that was a bit creepy? <laughs> who else would dare say that? <laughs> yeah, C considering Ooh. the kind of stuff he he does with his granddaughter on, on photos, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, stroking her hair. I mean, if he did that to my daughter, if I had a daughter, I mean, yeah. he couldn't survive it. <laughs> I just love to how he like he, he like confuses his sister and his wife. That was funny. Oh, they switched on me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then well, and then at one point where he's like, "Oh, I'm running for Senate." It's like you're running for president, not Senate. <laughs> yeah. Well, I and find. Then, and then at one interview, where he looks like he looks like half asleep. That was funny too. Oh, you know, Biden went to Jesuit University, don't you? Was, isn't Joe Biden like openly like a like openly says he's a, he's a Catholic like like Joe Biden openly says he's a Catholic and he's a, he's like a devout, a devout Catholic. You know? I don't know if he said that, but I do know he went to uh, was it Fordham or Georgetown, one or the other. It was actually funny too because I, I just know that Joe Biden claims to be a devout Catholic. I actually read about one instance where supposedly this this one his lo his local archdiocese actually refused to give him communion because. Yeah. yeah, support because he because he's pro abort because he supports abortion. So so and, and because they're the Catholic Church does condemn abortion in their in their their uh, documents. So oh, his, his, the can local, they just clarify that, John? They condemn abortion for the Catholics, but they don't yeah. object to the a Jesuit organizing to for abortion to be legalized for the those that are not Catholic. I believe that's that that abortion thing is uh, another like Inquisition, just differently. Well, I actually did. A, I did. A, I did a, 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 a. Well, before my website was deleted, I had a post about the uh, what was that guy's name? The Robert Dryan or whatever, the Jesuit priest who was influential in, in getting abortion legalized in the United States. Yeah. And, but the thing is too is that so anyway that the bishop so so it was kind of funny because Biden like is supposed to be about Catholic. Meanwhile, the, the archbishop of, of his area actually refused to give him communion because he's pro-abortion. So yeah. hey, you know, I'm hey, not... you know, I, I just say hey, a broken clock is right twice a day. That that thing about um, abortion, you know, Robert Dryden, I must have posted, 
posted that at least uh, two or three thousand times. I mean, you've seen the amount of tweets I've done on Twitter, John. Uh, I've seen that. Yeah, I mean. I mean, yeah. the thing is, when, when I first heard that, like, the first thing I did was I just dropped everything I'm doing and I decided to, to write something about it because, hey, this is, you know, like, people need to know that this, th there's a Jesuit priest who helped, you know, because you have the Catholic Church at one breath saying abortion is wrong, abortion is sin, but then you have yeah. their Jesuit priest getting it legalized in America. Yeah, but it's wrong for Catholics, and yeah. it's obviously wrong for us, yeah, obviously, but they want it legal for those who are not Catholic, so they can yeah. all go and they can basically just wipe yourselves out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the thing is too, even if there are Catholic priests who are against abortion, I just say, well, a broken clock is right twice a day. Like 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 that bishop who who didn't give Biden communion because he was for abortion. Well, hey, a broken clock is right twice a day. You know. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think there are some Catholics who are generally like against abortion. Like like I think oh, there are some other. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, right. and, and and in that case, I just say, you know, like like again with that bishop, I'd say, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. You know, the broken even a broken clock can tell the right time sometimes. Mm. But the point is, John, it's just very sinister. I love saying, like, how they're saying for, amongst their own ranks, don't do it. But uh, behind the scenes, for all the unbelievers, so you, you guys can just kill yourselves. Yeah, exactly. And, and plus, too, it's also how how they they condemn a, they condemn birth control too. Meanwhile, you know, and, and not to mention too, not only do they condemn birth control, but I actually read that that among professing Christians, Catholics get the most abortions out of any out of, out of professing Christians. That, like people who profess to be Christians or who be labeled under the category of Christian, Catholics actually get abortions at higher rates than everybody else does. So, so it's kind of funny. I mean, it doesn't seem like their priests are preaching really hard against abortion when, like, when like fifty percent of Catholics in America have got abortions. If I had a look at the numbers for the abortions in the USA, John. Uh -huh. The last time I looked, it was at least fifty-one million. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, all, all because of that that Jesuit Satanist. Uh, well, Robert basically, Ryan. yeah. I mean, the Scotus, the Supreme Court of the United States, is basically Catholic. So he's got it through the Senate or whatever they do over there. Yeah, 50, about fifty-one million dead, fifty-two million babies. And, and and that's just that's just in America alone. We're not talking about every other place. Oh yeah, yeah. We've got abortion over here, and you've got it in Canada. Yeah, we got. I mean, abortion in Canada has been legal since nineteen sixty-nine. So I mean, even yeah, longer than America. Yeah. And the thing is, Canada. And think about Canada. Is that Canada has always been a very predominantly Catholic country, even today. You know. Like everywhere I go, I see cars. Like when I go to the grocery store, I constantly have seen cars with the rosaries on their mirror. So like even even now, Canada, like they say it's about like like sixty percent Catholic. I I think that's got to be a low number. It's got to be way higher than that because like like I see Catholics all over the place. So it's like it's got to be a higher number than that. But but basically, like 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 but like basically, Canada is predominantly Catholic, and then. Abortion, uh, because 1969 was when both abortion and homosexuality was legalized, and then in 2005, same-sex marriage was legalized. And honestly, I would not be surprised if there was a Jesuit connection to both those those things being legalized. Plus, too, uh, in in our in our Parliament building, there's like a big giant Catholic crucifix in the Parliament building. So, oh yeah, know. Two doors are Catholic, isn't it, John? I think. Uh, I don't know if he's Catholic, but there is a picture I saw of him with the Pope. So, uh, actually, on in, in, one, in one of my videos, I actually brought it out where I showed, uh, like Trudeau meeting with the Pope. So, even if he's not Catholic, he definitely is is friend friendly with the Pope. He's probably kissed the Pope's ring in more ways than one, John. I would not be surprised. I mean, considering how how heavily Catholic Canada is, I would not be surprised if you had to have some kind of like support or or endorsement from the Pope in order to get in. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because like back in nineteen twenties, you know, America was not the kind of Jesuit nation that it is today. And back in nineteen twenties, many people were actually aware of of the the danger of the Catholic Church. I mean, the the the, the Ku Klux yeah, Klan. It, it used to be illegal over there, John. In oh, America, some some states, uh, Catholic um, Catholics in government, and all sorts of other stuff. They couldn't build churches. Uh, yeah, and, and they're they're like, like for example, uh, groups like the the Klan, the KKK. They they targeted Catholics more than they did Jews in many cases. I mean, I mean, I, I looked into it. Like like the Klan, they targeted Catholics more than than blacks and Jews. They targeted blacks and Jews. So it's like you know they 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 saw they even they saw a threat to the Catholic Church. And and there are some areas where, you know, if you were if you were a Catholic, you could not get into any kind of. In fact, even in the nineteen sixties, you know, when when Kennedy first won the election, everyone was shocked that a Catholic had actually won the presidency because like no one thought that was possible because everyone 
you know, because it, it was so hard for Catholics to get into any kind of political office, let alone the president of the United States. Mm. And, and of course, the Klan, you know, they targeted Catholics, and you had all these other like vigilante groups going after Catholics as well. And then, you know, and and, and that's that's the thing too is that you know people back then they, they understood, and I I think I even heard too that the Pope was actually banned from from entering the United States until the 1980s. When, yeah, when, it was. Big. It, it was Ronald, it was actually Ronald Reagan, the wonderful Christian president that he was supposedly, who actually who actually lifted the ban on the Pope from the United States because before then he was actually banned from entering the United States. Yeah, I actually think Kennedy was a decent person, really. Yeah, he may have been Catholic, but he definitely was. Um, he definitely did not go. He definitely bucked the trend of all what they wanted him to do. Well, he was a proponent of no church and state. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he was he was what he's what what they would have called a, a liberal this way. Hmm. Because when, when Catholics talk about liberals, they're not talking about what you think of liberals, they're talking about like people who just hold the biblical doctrines like church state separation or, or liberty of conscience this way. In fact, I just did a video about this recently where I showed how the, the popes have always been against liberty of conscience and how, how how one of their, their documents from the eighteen hundreds condemns liberty of conscience as a heresy. Yeah. You're not allowed a conscience if you're a Catholic. Yeah, you, you can't if if uh, if you don't. Uh, which is actually funny. This is actually a scripture uh, uh, someone showed me today. Actually, this is actually a really good scripture they use against the concept of the Pope or, or that kind of stuff. This is uh, Luke chapter nine verses uh, forty nine to fifty. This is actually it's a really good scripture to use. Actually, this is this is what it said. Luke chapter nine verse forty nine to fifty. Yeah, uh, it put says, it John, so I can put it on screen. Okay, I'll I'll put it on the so. Okay, Luke chapter nine, verse seven and forty-nine. Sorry about the song. So this will get. Is what it says. So it says, um, and John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth uh, followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for that he for the he that is not against us. Is for us, and, and and I was pointing out that what it's basically showing is that there is no, you know, special church leadership that has any kind of special access to God. Anybody who has Christ is, you know, has the Holy Ghost, and he has just as much of authority as the apostles did when it comes to, to doctrine. Basically, and and then basically here where the apostles were telling him, "Hey, no second, we, he shouldn't be doing this because he's not following us." And Jesus is saying, "No, he's he's he ha he's with me, and you know that he can he can cast out devils too." It basically is showing that there's no kind of exclusive access to God that that some people have but others don't have. This way. Which which is a good kick at the Pope because he acts like he has some kind of special access or special knowledge from God that others don't have, which is not true according to that verse. And, and plus, it also disproves the idea of, of the apostles being infallible because right there he also uh, corrects them. Bob, I shared another link when you have time. You should watch it. See what you think. I'm just going to put some milk in my tea and I'll put that in. Oh, and by the way, too, you know that, that V from Vendetta thing? You know how it's based off that? What's what's his name? Guy Fox or whatever? He was a Catholic, by the way, too. The thing oh, yeah. That. He was. He, he actually tried. He, he tried. He, he, he tried to like rebel. He, he rebelled against James. King James the first. He tried to rebel against him and fail. He failed the rebellion, which was, you know. But yeah, he, the, guy, the guy Fox. He was a cat. He was, and not just a Catholic. He was a very devout Catholic too. He was very devout in, in the Catholic religion. So, he was yeah. a member of, of Spanish royalty in some way. It was his proper name isn't Guy Fox. It's Fox of the Guise family. Oh yeah, but but yeah, he, he he's he's the one behind the he's he's the kind of he's the kind of your figurehead behind the whole anonymous meme thing. Mm. Spanish nobility, it was. Yeah. Piece of garbage. Yeah, I, I just find it funny he tries to, he tries to rebel against the the James the first, but then he fails miserably at doing so. You can't fight against God. And, and yeah, that's that's kind of the problem. It doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how much it doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't doesn't matter how how uh, or how, how but it doesn't matter how many devils Satan has given you to help you help you. You're not going to fight against God and win. No, can't. It doesn't it doesn't matter if Satan himself were to try to you know go with you. You're not gonna you're not gonna win. I mean, Satan himself submits to God too. You read that in Job chapter one. So, you know, 
it, it makes sense why his, his little rebellion failed. Now, I, I always say this too. Whenever Catholics say, "Well, our church is the church that Christ founded," well, that is true. Your the your Christ did find your church, but your Christ is not the Christ of the Bible. So there, hey, so there, there, there is truth. You're, like you know, your Christ did did start your church. That's because your Christ is the Antichrist. Like your like their Christ is not the, the Christ of the Bible. So there is truth to that when they say, "Oh, Christ started the church." Yeah, your Christ did start your church. Yeah. Well, they actually think that the Catholic so-called church is Christ. Yeah, they actually think that they think that their church is basically the kingdom of heaven. I read, I literally read it in their catechism. That they think that their church is the is basically the kingdom of heaven on earth, and that the Pope actually like fills the role for Jesus Christ while he's gone. They literally think that say that verbatim in their catechism. Yeah, I just thought that none of them have been daft enough to tell God that. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that, that, that's my theory too. I happen to believe that when the Antichrist does return, they're going to think he's Jesus Christ. Because again, the, the, the Christ of oh, yeah. Rome. Because yeah. again, I, again, I, like the, the Christ of Rome is not Jesus Christ. The Christ of Rome is the Antichrist. Mm. You know. So again, again, it's like when 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 Catholics say, "Hey, Christ started a church." Yeah, you're right. Christ did start your church because you know the Antichrist did start your church. That oh, is true. Christ, yeah. Yeah, but 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 that's but that that I, that I mentioned it. But then, but but yeah, you're right, you're right. But that, but your Christ is not is not Jesus Christ. Your Christ is is not the Christ of the Bible. You know, it, mm. it, it's just like with the Muslims. The Muslim, the Christ of Islam is not Jesus Christ. Or just like even there is even some Hindus who believe in Jesus Christ. Well, their Christ is not the Christ of, of God's word. Theirs is just basically the Antichrist. Because because the Jesus Christ of Islam is is uh, well first of all they believe he was submissive to Mary just like the Catholics do, uh, but they also uh, deny he's God which you know the Catholics do that when the, with their Trinity Trinity doctrine in many ways, but you know that, that's the whole thing too. It's actually funny too. I, like like it's funny how Catholics will say that Mary or that Jesus submits to Mary and Muslims believe the exact same thing. They, they believe that Jesus always submitted to Mary. So there's another doctrine they have in common. Yeah. And it's funny too how, how the Quran and this is funny too how Catholics like like venerate Mary so much, yet Mary is like only mentioned like 19 times in the entire Bible, and the Quran like mentions her over a hundred times. So it's funny how even the Quran mentions Mary more than the Bible do the Bible does. Yet Catholics will say Islam is false, even though the Quran mentions her and, and exalts her more than the Bible does. Yet, and yet Mary was actually Mary was actually a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and, and plus the, the Mary of the Bible is nothing like the Catholic Mary, not in any sense oh, of the word. Oh. If, if I, I, I even told a Catholic, I said that if Mary were here today, she would have probably been the first ones to smash those Mary idols. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't be happy with that lot. Yeah, I, I, I told this Catholic, she would have probably been way more repulsed than, that, than any of us would have been at seeing people making idols of her. She would have been the first one to, to take those idols and smash them. I mean, like for example, if someone started making a statue of me, I would start, I would smash it right then. I'd say, "Hey, don't make a statue of me." You know, that's no. just, that's that, that, that's just the natural reaction any say person would have to someone trying to make a statue of them like that. That's just the natural reaction you take it to smash it. That's uh, Reuben Israel's job. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I would just I would just love it too. Like, like you know, obviously I don't believe in like the you know, like whenever you hear about Mary apparitions, yeah, it's called devils. That's what it is. But basically. It would it would have been just kind of funny if, if Mary actually to, were to return just to smash a Mary idol to prove the Catholics don't worship me and then just go back to heaven and then they realize okay we'll stop worshiping her, you know, I don't know just be kind of funny that happened. They keep having those apparitions, John, don't they? Yeah, that that's the thing too is that you know when you understand how the Bible you know when you understand biblical doctrine like whenever they say these things that I, I i believe they're telling the truth i don't think they're lying i think they are telling the truth because when you when you know how devils work in the bible it, it's very possible they're telling the truth you know i mean I, I don't think they're lying i think they're telling the truth when they see these things have you ever seen an, Im an image of mary on one of your paid potato crisps john <laughs> yeah I, I well i, I mean i don't know maybe I, I, I just love that when when Ruben Israel one time said, "Hey, you know, if you saw Mary in your in your uh, potato chips, you'd start bowing down to that potato chip," which is is true in many ways. So they they did see that they would start bowing down to it. Oh, they would, yeah. I'd just eat it, me. Oh, and, and it's funny too because like I like there's like because again, Canada is a very Catholic country. So in my hometown, there's just Catholic churches all over the place. Literally every single one, there's like a big Mary statue right in front of it, and then there's like a little tiny 
thing of Jesus on the on the back of it. So it was like they put way more emphasis on Mary than they even do their their oh, yeah. who who, yeah. who they who they think is Jesus Christ. Hmm. Or or what they'll have is they'll have Mary holding baby Jesus. It's like, hey, how, how would you get him out of the manger and and get him off that cross too? Because he's not on there and it's finished. But you know that they'll have him as a baby, which is like. Well, I've got this about? image. It's a Roman Catholic image of this Dominican monk <laughs> holding what's supposed to be baby Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I saw that picture. That was funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. It's like, okay. So, 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 that, so now we have not just Mary holding baby Jesus, we also have Catholic clergy doing the same thing I've as well. Saved on one of my memory sticks somewhere, John. But I've got I, I think I have a screenshot of that same image. I, I saw it on a Catholic art website. It's like, you know, and I think that some people would actually pay money for that thing. <laughs> oh, they would. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, because again, they they think that they think this little baby is is Jesus Christ. First of all, Jesus Christ is not a baby. He's he's grown up, and he's not. He was never born to begin with. He was already he was always God from the beginning. But like I always say, get him out of that manger and get him off that cross, and you know, just show him some respect. You know what I mean? He wasn't blonde either. Yeah, he wasn't. He was not a white man either. Okay, <laughs> he was not. He was not a blonde hair, blonde haired white man. He was. He was from the Middle East, so he was not white, and he was not black either. Too, he was not from Africa either. So, to all the, the black Hebrew Israelites, sorry, sorry to all of them. <laughs> it's funny too with the black Hebrew Israelites how they'll they'll hold up a picture of, of of the white pictures of Jesus and say that's satanic. But then they have the little <laughs> they have the little black images of Jesus Christ as if, as if that's, that's any less of an idolatry than the white images. I also find it funny too when I, when I tell Catholics, I and, and this, you're not going to believe this, but it's funny how well I, I got into a little argument with Fro in the comment section, and I was telling him, you know, hey, you know, how do you make images of God the Father if we're told, like I, I quoted in the verses that we're talking about God being invisible? How do you make images of an invisible God? And, and he said, well, you can do that. I'm like, it's like, you know, it, it, it's like he literally. I have the screenshots. He literally said, you know, he said, well, I, I, I asked him, how do you make images of God the Father when, when, for example, John chapter 1, verse 18, I think it just talks about him being invisible. He just says, well, you can do it, you know, and like how. He, he couldn't really explain it properly, but he just tried to say, well, you can just do it because, you know, church says so. But it, it's funny. I've always found a problem. Like, how do you how do you draw a picture of, of God the Father when he's invisible? How do you draw a picture of him? But they they can just somehow do it, apparently. So when when did you? So I've never noticed these comments. Has it was it was all it was all it was actually on a video I did a while back about scripture versus Catholic traditions. But like, oh, but but he I basically I just asked him like you know how do you make a, an image of of God the Father when he's invisible and he just said well you can do it and he didn't really explain why but but I I just always found it problematic how do you like I've always wondered how you you just somehow know how to draw God the Father when he you don't even know what he looks like when he's invisible. I mean, like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of this book I read when I was in second grade, where it, this kid says, "Oh, I drew the, I drew a picture of an invisible castle and just a blank piece of paper." That's what it is. How do you draw something that's invisible? You can't. <coughs> and plus, too, the it's funny too how the way they draw God the Father, they make him look like a Roman pagan god. Like by the way they draw yes, him. Yes, you do. I've seen that in the uh, chapel Sistine thingy. The uh... yeah. With the ET dude, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like you compare the the statues and images of, of God the Father, God the Son, as they call it, and the Holy Ghost. It looks like no different than a pagan Roman statue. I mean, like you could probably put them side by side and not see any difference. Hmm. Like, like I guarantee, like I, I guarantee any, like, like, let's just say that, like, there was some pagan Roman who we could just time travel to the modern era. He was to visit the Saint Peter's Basilica. He would think it's a pagan Roman temple because of how similar it looks. Or, or, or I'll say this: you, you bring back an early Christian from the first century. You take him to Saint Peter's Basilica. He would probably think it's a pagan Roman temple too because of how similar it looks. Because all that Catholicism is is just simply repackaged Greek Roman pagan religion. It's all that it is.
They got another Eric Phelps. He pointed out how what they did was they 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 um they like for example he said the College of Cardinals it became basically the uh or no sorry the Roman Senate became the College of Cardinals and then the office of the Emperor became the office of the Pope basically and then and then and then their temples were their temples were just turned to Catholic churches basically. What's their magisterium uh, major magisterium? I don't even know what that is. It's weird. I don't, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> but like you find this too, like, like like whenever Satan creates some kind of counterfeit Christianity, it's always just some repackaging of, of a pagan religion. Like with Islam, it's a repackaging of of Arabian lunar worship, hey, or, you have, or you have, yeah, like Mormonism, which is the repackaging of Islam in many ways. I mean, all, all I can do is just repackage stuff. Yeah, but and then, like essentially Islam, essentially Islam. Masonry, isn't it? Was that? Uh, Mormonism is sort of repackaged masonry, I think. Isn't yeah, it? Many, in many ways, it's just simply repackaged. Essentially, what it is, is essentially Islam for the white man and repackaged Freemasonry. Just like how, how I've heard it said that Islam is essentially just Catholicism for the Arabs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's essentially just Catholicism repackaged for the, the Arabic people, this way. Hmm. And then of course, and of course, you have you have these groups like the Nation of Islam, which is like a black supremacist group, which is essentially just Islam. It's just essentially just Islam for the black man, basically. It's just simply that's all that it is. Yeah, because Islam hates black people. Yeah, that's the fun thing. I, I actually love it too when they try to say that oh, Christianity is a white man's religion, but you're following Islam. I mean, the, the Arab Muslims took slaves too, uh, black people slaves. In fact, the reason why most of of Africa is Muslim is because of the. Islamic expansion and forced conversions of Islam to Islam. That's why that's why places like Nigeria or Somalia are, are like ninety nine percent Muslim. Well, there's still slavery over there. Yeah, and in Libya, when America took over and uh, opened up a can of democracy. Yeah. Or, 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 the, or they they uh, they dropped some democracy from an airplane on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, same, or same thing, not just in, in Africa, but even parts of the Middle East. I mean, because Islam was started in Arabia, but like there are parts of the Middle East that are not Arabic. Like you have Persia with Iran, you have what what, what do you have with the the Mesopotamians with the Iraq or whatever? You know, they're they're Muslim too because they are forced into it by the Arab Arab people as well. You know, or like you know, you're quite cynical, John. Can I use that phrase of yours about what, which one? Oh yeah, sure you can you can use it. Yeah, I, I didn't even make it up. I just heard it. I heard someone else say it, like like dropping oh, right. dropping democracy out of an airplane. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is too is that you know even places like Persia or Afghanistan or Pakistan they're not like Muslim. They they were just forced to converted by the Arabic Muslims who expanded. I mean, I mean, like, like the reason why places like Afghanistan or Iran or anything like ninety eight percent Muslim is because it was forced. They didn't vol they didn't voluntarily do it. It was forced on them. Or like why Egypt is like like Egypt, you know, gave up their pagan gods and accepted Islam because it was forced on them, basically. Essentially, with Egypt, I was telling I was telling this one time where I was saying that with Egypt, all they simply did was just get rid of their pagan gods and accept another pagan god, Allah. Yeah, you know, they got they got rid of their Egyptian moon god and accept the Arabian moon god. It's a mess. See, see, people don't, you know, that's a small verse in scripture, John. I'm sure you would agree with me. And I know you know exactly what I'm all about. Uh, Jesus was tempted by Satan. I'll, offer, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus didn't contradict Satan's ability to offer that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so, yeah, because Satan's, like, Satan's the god of this world. He can offer the kingdoms. Yeah, small g, yeah. yeah. Yep, small g. Always got to make that qualification. You get yeah. accused. I actually, I actually saw some Muslims try to use that verse. They see the Bible calls Satan God. Yeah, lowercase g. Whenever you have pagan gods or false gods, they're always lowercase g. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it, it just like Luke, like that verse in Matthew four. It just shows that Satan he can offer the king. That's why I believe too. You know, in order to get to a certain level of political power, you have to just worship Satan because then you won't, you won't get there without it. Well, you can't get in. You you just not. I mean. Benjamin Disraeli, I can't remember uh, the precise words, phrases that he used, but the government that you think you've got is very different than the reality of what you really have. In other words, behind yeah. the curtains. 
it, yeah. it's a different government altogether. Yeah, H- hence also why too, okay. you know, hence also why too, you know, like like many of them, you know, that they, they like they, they do what they're told because oftentimes what would happen is that they'll hold get to hold a picture of their family and say, hey, you want anything to happen to them, then do what we're, do what we're told this line or do what you're told. Yeah, I mean the thing is, I think of government as like being a big lawnmower. It's just yeah. a different prime minister pushing it, but it's still the same cogs and machinery and blades doing the whatever. Yeah, that's that's the thing too is that you know is that when you really get down to it, the president is is not doesn't have any real power. I mean, he does what he's told, and, and that's it. You know, and 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 if he doesn't, then the CIA their goons will come after him. They're like the Pope will send the CIA goons after him. Well, he can't run for president without getting clearance from the FBI and the uh, yeah, and other organizations. And then here's the other fun part too: you have the Alfred B. Martin dinner, which is a Jesuit dinner where both sides come together, both Democrats and Republicans have a dinner, and essentially just mock the American people and say, "Look, we're all on the same side, but you can't see it because you're so dumb." I mean, yeah. like seriously, like they literally do that. You you can't even make this kind of stuff up. It's right there, you know. Is it? Oh, what's the name of that dinner again? It's called it's called the Alfred B. Martin dinner. It's a Jesuit dinner where literally both sides of both parties come together, sit at a dinner, and essentially just mock the Amer- American people, and and you know just, like show how they're all on the same side, and and just mock yeah. the American people like, hey, we fooled you. Look at look at us, we're all on the same side. I thought it was a different name. Well, there, there, there's all there also what there also was the um, Al Smith dinner too, which also was a kind oh, of yeah, that's it. yeah, the, yeah, well, that's... well, yeah, there, 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 there's there's that there's also that there's that too where you had Trump and Hillary. Getting yeah, together, yeah. essentially just mocking, mocking you, the American people. Saying, look at us, all, look at us, we're all on the same side, you know. Yeah. We we all work for the same. We all work for the same Satanists in Rome. I mean, like, you can't you can't make that. It's all right in front of your face. But you, like 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 it's just, it's mind games. It's all it's all right there in your face. But then you can't like you just think, oh, they're just there to have a, a friendly dinner. No, they're there to basically mock you, the American people, and say, look, we're all on the same side, and you're too stupid to realize it. It's too big, it's too big and obvious for anybody to take it seriously. When it yeah, is that. that's that's the thing about mind control. They make it just so obvious in your face that you just don't even see it. It's just so obvious that like you just like you're just not able to see it. You know. I'm just curious though. Do, do they not realize, or are they just so deceived that what they're doing, they're going to be going to hell for? I I just think too that they're so bought into the whole left right paradigm that they just can't see it. They actually but, think they're going to win. I mean, the people controlling this. Like, oh, I, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, if they, if I mean, if they really think that Satan's gonna somehow save from hell, they, they, they got a, a, a big surprise coming. But I just think that some of them are just so, I don't know what their deal is. I don't know what what their mentality is. They're definitely not thinking straight. They're def, they're definitely not mentally thinking straight. That's one thing. I think the brainwashed a lot of the time. Well, they're obviously blinded by Satan, and when you're blinded by Satan, it's hard to kind of see out of that. I mean, when I was an atheist, I was blinded by Satan, so I, I, you know, I can kind of attest to that. Yeah, well, Satan will never make himself obvious. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Satan's not gonna, Satan's not gonna come to you with a, a pitchfork and, and and hooves and say, "Hey, I hate God, I, hey, I hate God, let's rebel against him." He's gonna come to you with something. I mean, he comes as an angel of light. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't actually think a human being could actually survive a, a proper visitation from Satan himself. Yeah. Well, like a lot of these, a lot of these Hollywood celebrities too. The reason why a lot of them, like I've heard too, the reason why, like a lot of these comedians, for example, the reason why a lot of them can do these kind of weird impressions is because they have devils in them. They're allowing them to do that kind of stuff. Like what's his name, Robert Rob, Robin Williams or whatever the guy's name is. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, he he was definitely possessed with devils. I mean, like like he openly said it, and plus he mocked God quite a lot too. And plus, you know, a lot of these celebrities, the reason why they get so rich and famous is because. You know, like like that phrase, "always oh, sold your soul for rock," and they sold your soul for fame and fortune. There's actually a lot of truth to that. They they sold their soul because you know they they um what, what's that verse in Mark chapter eight where or Mark chapter eight where it says they they um you know gain the whole world but lose their own soul. Yeah, they gave their soul to Satan for worldly material wealth. And that that's hence why so many of these celebrities are like like I did a whole series of videos on this showing you know that these celebrities are like doing these satanic rituals. Subtly, but like right in your face, Miss Wine, but then all subtly. Yeah. But those satanic rituals look, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen any, but I'm sure they look tame to the average person, don't they? Well, to the average person, they look, they look like a good light show or a good, you know, performance here and there. But like yeah. when you really get down to it, like when, like, like when you get, when you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the verse. Yeah, Mark chapter 8, verse 36. That was the verse I was thinking of. But basically, you know, it's like, 
you know, it looks all tame, it looks like a good light performance or good show, but like they don't know the kind of like undertones to it. That's why. Like, like for example, for example, the whole Travis Martin concert thing. I, I did, I did like multiple videos on that thing. The whole Travis Martin thing, where the concert, like, like there was like a big riot that happened, and then basically, it like, like, there, like some kid died or whatever, and like a bunch of people went to the hospital because like I don't know what happened. But I, I pointed out how just the entrance to the concert to the concert looked like a gateway to hell. I mean, like it literally looked like your your paintings of hell from like the middle ages basically like just the entrance of the thing it basically was his face with what you go through his mouth which it, it looks like the mouth of hell so it's like i pointed out it was like a subliminal message but then i also pointed out too how you know because travis like, apparently he was told that the concert was getting out of hand and he had to shut it down for safety reasons but he just chose not to and then you know and then and then i said how it, it possible that could have this could have been like a, a blood sacrifice you know it was just a theory i had but I don't know, but like they do this kind of thing subtly, subtly, so you don't even notice. But you know, well, that's a video too. And like, seeing like that post from that John, it shows some big black shadow figure jump into the crowd. Oh, really? Well, that doesn't surprise me one bit. I actually like you know who Ariana Grande is, right? I used to like when I, when I was the atheist, I used to follow her quite a lot. I actually read that she openly admits that she has devils like like torment her when she when she's trying to sleep and like like I read about one thing where she actually like supposedly saw a devil come into her room and it was like a big like six foot tall you know black mask or whatever. So it's like yeah, a lot of celebrities, you know, yeah, they may, they may be pretty wealthy and famous, but hey, they they are tormented a lot of times. Oftentimes they're tormented by the devils they're serving. Yeah, but I would not be surprised if there was a black figure jumping in the crowd because, hey, the, the entire thing was just a big blood sacrifice. So that's all. So it would not surprise me one bit. Plus, too, like when you look at rap concerts, too, like like that comes from voodoo and that kind of stuff. So like when you're, you're dropping up the satanic spirit, like yeah, I would not be surprised if something like that did happen. Oh, and it's funny too, by the way. I mean, I could say so much about this, but it's kind of funny too how over in over in uh. Was it Haiti or whatever it is? There's actually a saying over there how the country is is um was it 50 percent Catholic, fifty percent Protestant, but hundred percent Voodoo because they basically are able to reconcile their Catholic faith with the Voodoo rituals because in their yeah. mind because 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 this, they they literally say that that's what, that's the, kind of one of their, their common sayings that it's it's fifty percent Protestant, fifty percent Catholic, but hundred percent Voodoo because they actually will say that hey you know prayers to saints is similar to contacting Voodoo gods for help basically. Yeah, well. Uh, voodoo is a compound of Roman Catholic doctrine and Afro-Caribbean pagan religion. Exactly, and and, and that's why that's why essentially like and and also the charismatics too when they when they pray to saints it's it's like that's why the voodoo practitioners in Haiti are able like you go to any voodoo shop you'll see statues of Mary you'll see crucifixes because oh, they're yeah, able to, yeah. because they're actually able to reconcile their Catholic religion with the voodoo rituals because it's so similar they like praying pray, like they'll say that praying to saints is just basically the same thing as invoking voodoo gods for help this line because you pray to saints for help you know yeah uh, the, the, like, like you have the saint the patron saint of this or patron saint of that no different than you have the voodoo loa of this or that whatever so like that's what they're able to reconcile their haiti voodoo practice with their catholic faith and that's why you go to any voodoo shop you'll see catholic symbols you'll see pictures of jesus you'll see mary statues i mean because it, it's just basically the same thing essentially it's just the same thing repackaged And not to mention too, like you look at a Catholic mass, it's very similar to a witchcraft ritual. You know, the incense, the candles, everything else. Yeah. But the chanting, I mean, it's, it's no different. I posted a meme about that on Instagram and a whole bunch of Catholics got triggered that I, I dare to compare their church to witchcraft. Yeah. On what what was that? On Twitter? It was on it was on Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm yeah. on there. Yeah, I gave up on Twitter because it was just pointless, really. They just block it, and that's it, you know. Yeah, I just think it's funny too how Catholics are able to actually like, like say, "Oh, we eat the flesh of Jesus Christ," and not like cringe when they say that because, like, it's, it's like how do you not find that kind of creepy? Almost like they're eating flesh of, of God. I mean, it's, it's creepy when you like it down to it. I understand how they can how they can, how they can like actually try to defend that. That's why. It's cannibalism, John. Essentially, yeah. But then, but then they try to deny it. Oh, it's not cannibalism. Oh, you're eating flesh. That's cannibalism. Don't tell. Don't don't kid me, buddy. I mean, I, I, I just tell them that because it's like the fact that they can somehow say it's not cannibalism is ridiculous. <clears throat> and also, just ignoring the the countless scriptures that condemn drinking blood and eating flesh like that. 
you know. Yeah. And that's just beef and lamb, isn't it? Yeah, and not to mention too, they're they're with the the Eucharist. You know how they lift up. You know, it's it's essentially just sun worship. You know, it's all that it is. Yeah, well, that's what that monstrance is from uh, Mithraism. Yeah, it's the worship of the Babylonian sun god. Yeah, something like that. You know, yeah. which makes sense because Rome is mystery of Babylon, so of course they're going to worship the, the Babylonian sun god. <clears throat> Can't get well, through to him, John. We've got to pray for him. Yeah, well. I, I agree. That's the problem, too, when you're dealing with hardcore Catholics. Like, no matter what scripture, no matter what arguments you use, they're not going to budge. All you can do is pray for them because why? Well, they're blinded by Satan. You can't really do much except for pray at that point. No. You know, I mean, no amount of arguing is going to get through to them. It's not, you can't really do it. You can't, I mean, all you can really do is just pray. You know? I think Flo is almost a lost cause. Yeah, that, that is, that may be the case because I, I just, you know, I can't seem to get through to them. So, I mean, that all we can really do is just pray for them. You know, that's the best we can do. Because when you got someone who just won't budge and just no matter what you do, then not much you really can do at that point. Except just like God deals with it this way. The other thing I've mentioned on my videos is that we have to be careful when Catholics are using biblical terminology uh, because they mean something completely different by it than what the scriptural meaning would be. Exactly. When they say church, they're meaning the Catholic church, not the body yeah. of Christ, or for example, for example, when they when they say communion, they're referring to the mass, not to the biblical communion. Yeah. Or for or for example, when they say you know salvation by Jesus Christ, they're not referring to the gospel; they're referring to the Catholic, the, the baptism, and all the other stuff. They're not referring to the, the biblical gospel. So yeah, and the sacraments and whatever. Yes, yeah, the sacraments, or, or or when they say baptism, they're referring to sprinkling a baby, not to biblical baptism. So, so that's the thing; they use biblical terms, but it's not. The biblical meaning, not, not the biblical uh, thing of that biblical term, best way I'll put it that way. Like when, when Catholics baptize babies, they're doing it because they're trying to basically wash their sins away. I, I I heard one person say he said it this way. He said he said he said you don't get washed in a tub, you get washed in blood, which is a very true statement. Baptism doesn't save anyway. Yeah. Plus, the idea that water washes away your sins—it comes from from uh, Hinduism, for example, with the, with the Ganges Ghats River, where, oh, where, they, where, they, where they basically believe that you you can bathe in that river and your sins get washed away. Like, like you talk to any Hindu, like you go to that river, you'll see hunt, like thousands of Hindu pilgrims bathing in that river because they think it's washing away their sins. But that river is so dirty; it's full. Of <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's funny too. It's it's always, it's, it's in fact people have actually got infected because it's so dirty. You know. But supposedly that river can, is like so pure it can wash it washes away your sins. So Hindus go to that thing and wash themselves in it. Yeah, and they all do. And there are other cases too in Hinduism too, where you commit a certain sin and you have to take you have to take a ritual bath for purification to get that sin. So Hindus are heavily into the thing of water washing away sins because like like I know I know that in one Hindu text, if you commit like adultery, for example, you have to take a ritual bath for purification. So I was, I was like, I heard someone joking one time saying, "Hey, so if you're a Hindu, all you have to do is just move right, it just live right next to the river, and then you can sin all you want and then just bathe in the river when you're done." Which is, which is what it comes down to. Like when you believe in that kind of stuff for salvation, you can just sin all you want and then just get and just wash yourself in the tub later, just get it washed away. So it really, it doesn't produce any holiness in your life because it's like, "Hey, I'll just sin all week and then confess my sins to the priest and then have it all gone." So it's like, hey, I'll, I'll just sin all day, and then after I'm done, I'll go down to the Ganges River and wash myself off. Yeah. Because if you're a Hindu, that's that. Like, if you're a Hindu, that's just what you can do. If you're a Hindu, you just sin, you sin, and then you go to the Ganges River, and then you go out and sin some more, and you just go back to the Ganges River and wash those sins away. It's just kind of mind-boggling how much deception is really out there. Yeah. And, and, and how, how pretty much all of it is just repackaging of the other, pretty much. 
Yeah. Every and anything outside of God's word is a lie, basically. Yeah, well, that's all Satan do. All Satan can do is just repackage things that you know that God does. You know. I mean, for example, I heard it put that when the Christians were being persecuted in Rome, Satan could see that it wasn't working because they kept just laying down their lives. So, all, so what he had to do was he had to create a counterfeit Christianity to fight against that, basically, because he saw that persecuting them wasn't working. So all he could do was try to infiltrate them with the counterfeit Christianity, which was, of course, Roman Catholicism. Yeah. And, of course, what Satan did was he just took the pagan Greek-Roman religion and just mixed it in with the New Testament, and that's how you got this counterfeit Christianity of, of of Catholicism, basically, because he could, so he says, "Hey, you can't beat him, so join him." You know. And when you go like down to it too, like the, like the Catholic Church, it like 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 I always tell I tell Catholics this whenever they say, "Oh, our church goes back two thousand years," I say, "No, your church goes back way before Jesus Christ. Your church goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel." You know, it goes way back. I, I just, I just, I just, I just tell them. I tell them, hey, your your church is indeed very. It is indeed very old. It goes back all the way back to the Tower of Babel. So it is indeed very old. You know. You know, because I, 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 I like to use the Tower of Babel as like an example of working your way to heaven, like trying to build a tower up to heaven. You, you try to work your way to heaven. That's, that's what it is. Because it, because I've always said that it's, it's no more ridiculous thinking you build a tower to heaven than thinking you work you can work your way to heaven. It's no more ridiculous. So when, whenever they say oh, our church is two thousand years, no, I said no, your church is indeed very old. It goes back before Jesus Christ even walked through. It goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel. So yeah, your church is indeed very old. That is true. Goes back a long way. In fact, I'd even say it goes back to Genesis chapter three, verse five, when Satan said, "Ye shall be as gods." So, I'd say it goes, yeah. it goes back that far. Yeah, well, with that catechism thing that you read earlier. Yeah, four. Yeah, paragraph four sixty. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes back even before Babel. It goes all the way back to Genesis three, when Satan told Eve, "You shall be as gods." So yeah, so there in churches is indeed very old. That is true. Mm. I just I just can't believe that. So like 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 it openly says you know man Christ will make us gods, but then that somehow just not that like a Catholic is not reading that thinking like wait what you know doesn't doesn't kind of bat an eye you know what I mean? Ah, uh, but it says that, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I forgot. We need we need Catholic sources to tell us what Catholic sources say. Mm. After, so so not so not only so not only do they use it for scripture, they use eisegesis for their own sources too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they're forced into it really. Oh yeah, they force their own doctrine into their own sources too. Yeah. Because what they like, what I whenever like whenever a Catholic does study the Bible, like he takes off his shell, blows the dust off it, gets rid of any cobwebs because he's been sitting there for so long, he'll often have his catechism right beside it because he'll read. Bible through the catechism. So if the catechism says it, you know, that's what he does. Or he'll, he'll take whatever church council or this or that, but, you know. But I, I just heard that analogy too, where it says, hey, take the Bible, you blow the dust off, because they barely, they never even read it. And whenever they do read it, it's always covered in dust at that point, because they just let it gather dust. I hope Fro watches the whole this whole stream. I hope so too. He he is a, he is. I would say like just on a human basis, he is a very nice guy. Uh, like he he is very polite, whatever. Just just on a human basis, obviously. But but his his he's following a satanic cult. That's the thing. He's not just following it, John. He's promoting it. Yeah, yeah. He's actively promoting the satanic cult that he follows. And I'm not the kind of person who just throws around the word satanic lightly. 
I mean, Roman Catholicism is blatantly satanic. I mean, I'm not just throwing it around. It's yeah. blatantly just full of Satanism. Yeah. I mean, anyone who doesn't believe me can just watch the Easter Mass where they say, where they literally say, Christ is your son, Lucifer. So, or or just pick up a catechism where it says you, you're going to be gods. Yeah. So, you know what? The, one of the other problems is, John, and I, I'm not an intellect, or I mean, I do have an intellect, I suppose. But in the school system, I don't know what it's like in Canada. Pretty bad, believe me. <laughs> school system is pretty but, bad. But it's almost as though it's a factory for dummies. You know, oh, it, it, <laughs> believe, believe me, it's way worse than that. Believe me, when I, when I was in high school, I remember being grade. I remember being grade ten history class. I was literally the only person in that entire class who wasn't just eating up everything and being told just mindlessly. And there was one time where I actually objected, where I said, "Hey, you know, because we're we're learning about gay rights." And I said, "Hey, I think marriage between, between a man and a woman." I was shunned for that. You know, I mean, like the public school, especially high school. Like high school is probably the worst. It, it it just basically indoctrination into liberal social liberal progressive propaganda. That's all that it is. Yeah. Like it is, it's a very true statement when they say they don't tell you what to, they they don't tell you how to think, they tell you what to think. Yeah. And, and then if you question it, you're a hate, you're a bigot and a hater or a racist if yeah. you do question it. Yeah. In fact, disagreeing with somebody is the new hate speech, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the thing is, if you disagree, you're you're, you're racist, sexist, Islamophobic, homophobic. You know, whatever. If you disagree, and I think it's yeah, too I mean, like the words Islamophobia, homophobia, sexism. I mean, they're just thrown around so lightly that like everything, everyone's that now, basically. Yeah. I mean, there was one person where who posted something about the Muslim hijab. He was called Islamophobic when it wasn't even like anti-Muslim. It was just saying, "Hey, the hijab is sometimes sometimes used for oppression." You know, which which is true in in some cases, but he he wasn't even saying to, he wasn't even saying to, trying to be hateful. He just said that, and but then he was called Islamophobic. It's almost as though they're trying to. Well, in fact, I believe they are. Oh, and the funny thing, thing is, the guy who said it was a Muslim, the guy who said it was actually a Muslim himself. He said it, but he, you know, they're actually brainwashing people into being afraid of being accused of being afraid of Islam. Or yeah, well, the, it's funny too because when I was in high school, I actually one time got. I actually almost got. I actually one time almost got suspended for being "quote unquote" Islamophobic because I I was actually being bullied by some Muslim students for being white, basically. And I actually sort of said, "Hey, wait a second. What you know? What are you going to accuse me of slavery when you guys took slaves yourselves?" And I, I got called Islamophobic. I I got called Islamophobic and almost got suspended for that. That that was when I was in eleventh uh, grade. Which is funny too, because if we're if we're concerned about hate speech, uh, have you read the Quran? I think it's full of "quote unquote" hate speech against everybody who's not a Muslim. Yeah, I think the Muslims are planning on cutting your right arm and your left leg off, John. Oh yeah. There was actually a funny meme where 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 it said, you know, where it had a shirt that says "cut along the dotted line," where it says, "Hey, you're gonna cut my head off, then just please do so with a sharp knife and be nice about it." This way. But I, I actually felt like the, the when I almost got suspended, I felt like it's coming to school the next day with a shirt that just, that just says that just says, "Hey Muslims, please cut along the dotted line or whatever to make it less painful." But of course, I, I didn't want to you know make anything worse. So, but I, I felt like doing that one time. Yeah, Muslims. There's quite a lot where I live. Oh really? Yeah, I know the UK is becoming pretty Islam 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 Islamified or whatever you want to say or Islam Islam. Islamized, or I can't ever say that word properly. Islamified, I'll put it that way. And then, and then I, I've heard. I mean, I've heard all kinds of. Every time I read something about the UK, I'm always just amazed at how how nuts it is over there. Well, I don't read the news, or I don't have a television, so I don't know what's going on. There was one instance I heard of over the UK where like this British politician actually got arrested for calling a Muslim rape game a rape gang a Muslim rape gang even after they were prosecuted and called a Muslim rape gang by the media. But she got arrested for saying they're a Muslim rape gang. After yeah, the prosecutors. Tommy, uh, oh, what's his name? Tommy something or other. T Tommy Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he, he got arrested one time for just reporting on, on the Muslim uh, grooming gangs. Yeah. Which is funny. It's, it's funny. So it's like, so it's like just simply pointing out, just reporting on, hey, this is what they're doing. That's now, they'll get you arrested now. 
and, and I've heard cases too where the police themselves were actually not like were afraid to actually arrest these Muslim grooming gangs because they didn't want to be called racist and Islamophobic. I've heard, oh, yeah. I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that happening too. Oh yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I think the police in this country are quite stupid. <laughs> I thought there was this video I saw from Paul Joseph Watson where he showed a video of this single guy with a knife, and like there's like 16 cops, and they're all like afraid of him. That's why. That was yeah. funny. But the thing is, too, you know, you know the Manchester bomber, right? The Manchester bomber. Well, there was actually one uh, instance where, right, as you said about the bomb, the Ariana Grande concert. Well, there was actually was a security guard in the arena who actually like suspected him of, of, of planning something, but he didn't stop him because he he didn't want to be called racist and Islamophobic. Well, it turns out his his suspicions were right as he blew himself up in the concert. Yeah. But essentially, the fear of being called Islamophobic ended up killing several people that night. So. Yeah. What we need in this country is another Cromwell. Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, the Church of England is it's a joke. I mean, like, like, yeah. like they, they, I mean, they're just welcoming the Muslims with open arms. I mean, historically, the Church of England would have probably been like, like the the ones most opposed to this to the Muslim not nuttiness, but now they're the ones welcoming it. Because the Ang Anglican Church used to, you know, be very. More biblical, biblically based in, in the early days. Now they're just ultra. Now they're just ultra. Now they're just ultra liberal. The Anglican so-called church isn't the same as the Church of England. Oh, really? The Anglicans are basically. I thought I thought, was, I thought it was the same thing. Mm, well, I mean, in some ways, you could argue that now, but I think Anglicanism is just a uh, 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 unpoked Catholicism. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like you look at the Church of England, like they do. It is essentially again just a repackaging of of Catholicism. But but like, but like but the, even but even from like a biblical basis, you know, it's like historically they would have probably been the ones like most opposed to the Muslim migrants, but now they're the ones welcoming them. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure mm -hmm. if if England had a, a leader like Oliver Cromwell, they definitely would not have the problems with the Muslims they have today. Well, all of his soldiers had the King James Bible in the pocket. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It doesn't surprise me. And and here's the thing too. This is why uh, these these selfish politicians. So they bring in these Muslim migrants. The Muslim migrants destroy the, the landscape. But meanwhile, they're safe in their, their little mansions on the hill with all our bodyguards. But meanwhile, they don't have to worry about what the average people to go through with the Muslims they brought in. And, and then, and then you have Tommy Robinson and his supporters. They get called neo Nazis and this and that by the media because they're protesting Muslim terrorism, basically. Which is like, so that makes you a Nazi, apparently. I don't know what Tommy Robinson has been up to lately. Is he? I, 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 he I followed him on Gab. He definitely he still isn't into all. He's, he's still doing a lot of activism, especially he's exposing a lot of the the COVID insanity too. He's been doing that quite a lot of stuff, exposing that recently. All right. But yeah, he, he what happened is that he started the group. He started the English Defense League back in the 2009, which was basically basically they 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 were they were a group that basically was was fighting against the Muslim terrorists. And then, of course, they got called neo Nazis and this and that because supposedly they supposedly what happened was is that is that neo Nazis apparently were, were joining the group, uh, and like there was pictures of them doing Nazi salutes at rallies. So then because of because that happened, they, the whole group got called a neo Nazi group. So then they kind of lost their credibility at that point. It's also kind of funny too how. Oh, go ahead. Go on, John. I wasn't going to say anything. I think it's also kind of funny too how you know Hitler actually was was pro Muslim, but now today you look at many neo Nazis in Europe, a lot of them hate Muslims. Yeah, he was uh, because uh, oh, was it was it the Grand Mufti of somewhere or other? Uh, well, yeah, because they, they um, yeah Hussein came to visit him. Well, what well, Heimer Kimmler, the the SS leader, he also uh, visited the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem too. And there is even a Muslim division of the SS as well at one point. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, but it, it's funny today because many neo Nazis in Europe today actually hate actually hate Muslims. In fact, I read about just recently there was a case where where the neo Nazi group was telling their followers to infect Muslims with coronavirus on purpose to to try to get rid of them. This way. Because now, because now today they just view Muslims as like another non-white threat to Europe, but historically they were they were pro-Muslim. But but now today they're they're a lot of them are, are hate Muslim. I mean, just go on Gap. You look at any neo-Nazi on Gap. A lot of them are very anti-Muslim. Oh, I haven't been on Gap for over a year now. I don't think. Yeah, it's it's uh, 
a lot of, ever since Trump got banned off Twitter, a lot of them, a lot of politicians joined Gab, so it's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Uh. But yeah, but a lot of neo Nazis today are anti Muslim because they just view it as another as like another non white threat to Europe. I mean, for example, there was a there was a, a Sikh temple shooting over in Wisconsin where the guy who shot it up actually mistaken it for a mosque because he, he was intending to shoot up a mosque and the guy was a, a neo Nazi skinhead. And of course you got the, the Christchurch mosque shootings, who basically was a neo Nazi who just shot up these two mosques this way and, and was playing Nazi anthems while he was doing it. I don't know all of this, John, because I, I mean as I say, I don't keep up with the news. Yeah, I, I used to I, I used to know about a lot of this because I was I was like into right wing politics when I was following a lot of that stuff. But yeah, yeah. but there have been several shootings at mosques by neo Nazis. A, <laughs> a lot of them they just view Islam as like a non white threat to Europe, but they they kind of forget the fact that Hitler loved Islam. Yeah, I think he did because they hate the Jews. Yeah, and there even today there are some cases where even Nazis who hate the Muslims will will ally with them when it comes to being against Jews. Like there's one video I saw where the, these white supremacists were actually protesting the the what they call the Jewification of, of the UK, and they were holding they're like they're like they're holding Palestinian flags and that kind of stuff at the rally. Yeah, the the, the white supremacists were so like so 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 even though they hate Muslims, a lot of times they'll just ally with Muslims when it's convenient for them when it comes to being anti-Jewish. It's funny too because wait a second, you wait a second. It's like you hate Muslims, but you're pro-Palestinian. It's like how does that work? Yeah, because Palest a lot of Palestinians are Muslim, aren't they? Yeah, they're like they're like ninety percent Muslim. So like you hate Muslims, but then you're pro-Palestinian. Wait, it's like wait, I thought you, I thought you didn't like Muslims, but then why you're pro-Palestinians? It's, it's kind of weird how that works. Yeah, fuzzy logic, or it, it's just weird how how they. It, it, it's it's like you know, it's like me saying hey. I'm anti-Catholic, but I support the pre-Vatican II Catholics. You know, I like them. Yeah, all that pre-Vatican II stuff. It doesn't make any difference. It's still Catholic. All it, all it is is just simply uh, Catholicism before it became liberals. It, essentially, it's just the Catholicism of the Middle Ages uh, because it's basically the, before Catholics became liberal. You know? Liberal. Because because many Catholics they find Pope Francis to be so liberal and ecumenical they turn to pre-Vatican II Catholicism. What's liberal about Catholicism? It's never been liberal, has it? Uh, yeah, there, in in terms of like liberal, in terms of like liberty, freedom, you know, uh, church state separation, uh, liberty of conscience, it never it's never been for that, you know. In fact, again, in my video I did about the Pope, I, I showed you know examples where the Pope himself condemns liberty of conscience as as basically a heresy. And again, like the Spanish Inquisition, you know, Jews and Muslims were were basically forced out of Spain and expelled or, or enforced to convert to Catholicism. Doesn't sound very liberal to me, you know. I find it funny too, because like you know, like with Brian Dillinger, they they hate the monsters they create. Well, they they create Islam, and then Islam goes rapid. And now they start persecuting the Muslims. They hate the monsters they create. Yeah, they create they create they create the Muslims and the Muslims go out of hand and they, then they then they start persecuting the Muslims. Well, it's like, hey, you created this mess. But then then they start the Spanish Inquisition to start persecuting the Muslims. The thing is, Brian is just being himself, really. Yeah, well, he's uh, letting his he's letting his pride get the best of him. Basically, people are, are following that. Yeah, because once well, people, people just. Especially JT, I think. Well, obviously, I think JT does it because it's just it's, it's beneficial for him because then Brian will promote his stuff, and obviously well, he needs he needs the followers. The money is the glue in both cases with Jake. He's making money out of his book and this and the other. Yeah, and his book, his book would probably not have got anywhere if Brian hadn't promoted it. Once somebody has donated to Brian, they bought, it's like they've bought in because if they admit that Brian is a dummy. Like you know what I mean? Um, then yeah. they got to admit to themselves that they've thrown money at him. Yeah, the, I'm actually glad that I never sent. I, there was one time where I was thinking of sending Brian money. I'm glad I never did so because yeah, I it, probably, it probably probably just got spent on a new car or, or like a new this or new that. But probably never did nothing had to do with the ministry though. I did notice in one of his videos when he came back on YouTube, he didn't show you all his vehicles. All you saw was that big yellow bus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that was it. Uh, he didn't yeah. show you that new yellow car that he got or vehicle. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was pretty, that was pretty funny. 
his ambulance. He had, I mean, when he bought that house, it was a big JCB outside the back of it. I'm actually curious, how many vehicles does he have? <laughs> like, how many? I've lost count of how many vehicles he owns. It would take a bit of doing, but uh, I think he's got at least, at the very least, well, he's got the ambulance, he's got that bus coach oh, yeah. thingy. He got that new car, so there's three. Oh, yeah. And then they had that truck. That's four. That's a lot of money there, John. You can't yeah. buy a big lorry like that for, I don't know, six or seven thousand dollars. Well, again, like his, his new quote unquote ministry headquarters is bigger than like both both my colleges combined. So it's like it, it, it was it was must have been pretty expensive. How I mean that that how many bedrooms does it have upstairs? It must be at least four or five. Well, that house would have been enough to fit multiple families. I mean, or multiple people, like like in a single floor. So it's like it's a very big house that he has. Well, there's enough room for him to live on the ground floor with his wife and child. Yeah, Definitely. which is funny too because he wants it as his ministry headquarters. Yeah, he does all the videos from one room, but then he needs the entire house for a so-called ministry headquarters. <laughs> but nobody can visit him, John. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a funny thing. Nobody visits. So he's 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 somehow the apostle Paul, yet nobody can visit him. Yet Paul visited the churches he he wrote to. But he's not. I mean, like his bro unlike his brother. Brian isn't distributing them to the saints. I mean, I know some of his followers. I know Matthew was struggling for cash two years ago. Brad needed money. Yeah. I think he, what he needed to move house somewhere. He, he lost his job. Um, you know... Well, I mean, they've all changed now. It's like he's got a different bunch of people following him anyway. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> Chantry is still there with him as a moderator. Really? Oh. I think I see I think I still seen her around. Okay. Yeah. She like she's still around, but like is anyone else still stuck around with them? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd love to talk. If you ever get to if you ever get to talk to Tim again, tell him I'd really like to talk to him. I'd, I'd love to get him on the stream and just talk. Not not pry him for information on Denver <laughs> yeah. like that, you know, because I'm sure he could come out with some stuff. I mean, I don't believe all that stuff that was said about... Um, Jeremy Carter. Yeah, same here. I, I, I just don't believe that he's a, a thief or a deceiver like that. Yeah, I mean, given how much Brian lies, I would not be surprised if Brian was lying was lying about some of the stuff there too. Yeah. It honestly, I mean, it honestly it would not. It would, it would not surprise me one bit. Mm. The one of the worst things Brian did was bring his wife in on his uh, video. <laughs> oh yeah, tell me about it. That was. That was, that was, oh, really? that was <laughs> oh my god. She made him look like an absolute fool. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really she funny. Did, John. I mean, it, that was that was a massive wreckage. That was a train crash. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That train crash would be an underst would be a complete that, understatement. That was a, a three mile motorway pile up. <laughs> oh yeah. Easy. <laughs> I'll never have a woman in my studio again, John, after that. <laughs> yeah, Five hours whinging. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. oh yeah, I remember oh. that. I still I still have that stream saved. Oh don't Ch let's change the subject. <laughs> Let's change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You don't see many Jehovah's Witnesses on YouTube. <laughs> Not that I've watched for any. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> oh, I'm going to bed now. I'm tired. Are you tired, are you, John? Yeah. Oh, it's ten o'clock at night, there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. I actually, I actually lost track of time. It's nearly breakfast, but John, any time you've got my email address, haven't you? Yeah, I do. So, 
Anytime you want to stream, John, I'll be straight on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably stream tomorrow if, if, if you can do that. Yeah. Well, I'm off to bed now. Good night. All right, John. You still there, Jeff? Jeff? I'm going to close the stream now. Because it's uh, half three in the morning. I'm going to get a bit of sleep.